comes about. Thank you. Okay. I want to call the April 15, 2021 meeting of Fayette Municipal Planning Commission to order. We are once again operating under Governor Lee's executive order uh, to uh, continue the state of emergency to, um, in response to the uh, COVID-19 um, virus. Um, we will start this meeting with uh, Mark. Will you take a roll call? Yes, uh, <clears throat> for the commissioners, um, Commissioner Green. Commissioner Green. Commissioner Green present. Commissioner Dick. Commissioner Dick present. Chairman Holliday. Chairman Holliday present. Commissioner Bellamy. Commissioner Bellamy present. Commissioner Myers. Commissioner Myers here. Vice Mayor Pavlin. Vice Mayor Pavlin here. Mayor Williams. <clears throat> Mayor Williams here. Mr. St. Clair. Uh, I'm here. Mr. Russ. Mr. Russ. I see him there, but he's not activated his voice yet. So I acknowledge his presence. I see him. Uh, Youth Representative Strobel. I see his name. Okay. Mr. Russ, can you hear me now? Okay, it looks like all the commissioners are present and the youth representative appears to be present. Um, so uh, okay. we should have be in good shape on that. Okay, we will move on to, um, once again, we will be, um, I will introduce the item. Mark will give his presentation. Then we will ask for a motion before we, um, Mark, we ask, we get back with Mark and ask him questions that we may have. Um, then he will introduce the uh, applicant and we'll go with the applicant at that point. Uh, I want to start with approval of the agenda. Do we have any changes to the agenda, Mark? Uh, we do not have any changes to the agenda. Mayor Williams makes motion to uh, approve the uh, agenda. Second. Mayor Pavlin, second. Nick seconds. All those okay. in favor? Um, I'll read out the roll call. Uh, we have a motion from Mayor Williams and Vice <clears throat> Mayor Pavlin seconds the motion um, to approve the agenda as submitted. Um, Commissioner Green. Aye. Commissioner Dick. Aye, uh, yes. Chairman Holliday. Aye. Mr. Bellamy. Aye. Commissioner Myers. Commissioner Myers, aye. Vice Mayor Poblin. Vice Mayor Poblin, aye. Mayor Williams. <clears throat> Mayor Williams, aye. Commissioner St. Clair. Mr. St. Clair, aye. Commissioner Russ. Commissioner Russ, aye. All right, uh, the motion passes unanimously, 9-0. Um, item number two, approval of the minutes of the March 8, 20, 18, 2021 meeting. Do we have any adjustments to that? Uh, staff does not have any changes proposed. Mayor Williams makes a motion to approve. Second. Mayor seconds. Okay, we have the motion from Mayor Williams, second from Commissioner St. Clair to approve the minutes as submitted. Uh, Commissioner Green. Approve, I mean, aye. Commissioner Dick. Abstain. Okay, um, Chairman Holliday. Approve. Commissioner Bellamy. Commissioner Bellamy abstains. Commissioner Myers. Commissioner Myers, aye. Vice Mayor Pavlin. Vice Mayor Pavlin abstain. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, aye. 
Commissioner St. Clair. Commissioner St. Clair approves. Commissioner Russ. Commissioner Russ, aye. The motion passes 603 with three abstentions due to being absent at the March 18 meeting. Item number three, discussion and public hearing on the fiscal year 2022 capital improvement plan. I'm gonna I'm gonna unshare my screen and turn it over to the town administrator, David Smoke. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Can I get a nod from somebody making sure I'm good? All right. Thank you so yes, much. You can hear you. I am gonna bring up the CIP presentation for everyone. Make sure y'all can see that too. Mark, is that good? Can you all see that? Yes. Everyone see that? Okay, good deal. Um, I, this so, is Commissioner Green. I can see that, but I'm also monitoring our, our YouTube site and it doesn't show up on there. It just shows up the last slide. Okay. I'm not Let sure me. if that works. Let me for your information, YouTube operates on a slight delay. Okay, that's what's going on then. Thank you. <clears throat> that is true. Um, it is showing up on the uh, channel on the on the cable. As long as you can see it, I think it will. We will have it on the channel here in just a just a few seconds. It's a, it is okay. a little bit of a delay, but um, so tonight I wanted to talk to you about the capital investment program. Each year we bring the CIP before the planning commission for your review. Um, we have had uh, already uh, several workshops with the Board of Mayor and Aldermen to get the draft CIP to the point that it is today. Um, now, what is the CIP? It's for any large project over $25,000, something we're going to spend a good bit of money on, and it's a one-time project or something that uh, may take us maybe a couple of years even to, to get uh, accomplished and get done. And we tend to uh, put these projects into different categories of parks, um, sidewalks, greenways, roads, and, and land acquisition. This helps us by looking at the plan over a five-year period, six-year period. It really helps us plan for the future. The only year, though, that we actually approve funding for, that the Board of Mayor and Alderman does, is for the year that we are planning for, which in this case is FY 2022, starting July 1st, and then ends on June 30th. All the other plan years from June or from uh, 2023 to 2027 are all planning years that could change based on uh, priorities or funding. Uh, maybe we don't get grant funding for a certain project and it moves back. So those are different things that we look at anytime we're reviewing the CIP. Um, as I mentioned earlier, with the CIP, the Planning Commission does get a chance to give us uh, feedback, give the Board of Mayor and Alderman feedback on these projects. Um, obviously, the board would need to fund those projects according to the budget and the priorities that they have. Uh, but ultimately, you know, the recommendation that the planning commission gives would be sent to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen, and they would have the final authority on uh, the, the, the uh, resources to put in for the CIP. So, as I mentioned, we do break these down into uh, a couple different categories. I'm going to talk through each of these based on the 2022 budget. I'm going to focus on the 2022 budget because that is the one we're funding currently. We've got, you know, as you have all seen, many projects uh, laid out over the next uh, six years. So if you would like to get into any of those as we get into the conversation, I'm happy to talk through them at that time. So first uh, project that we have next year uh, with, this actually kind of goes in uh, hand in hand with our McPhee Park Phase Three project. Uh, there is a home there that we've been using for storage for quite some time and that house is now becoming more of a as as people get into the park and, and be able to see the park and utilize the park uh, it's becoming more of a nuisance that we need to get rid of so we need uh, to have storage and we're going to put some storage on the public works facility uh, so this project would include twofold one is building a new building and then the other is demoing the current uh, we call it the demic house there at mcphee park and I was going to go through all these, and if, if you have a question uh, when we get to the end, then certainly we can go through those at that time. Land acquisition has been a key thing that we have had in the budget for many, many years uh, with the town. We're able to put away uh, projecting about $300,000 next year for land acquisition. And this goes for right-of-way acquisition, could go for park acquisition, uh, property in general that we need to acquire, easements, things like that. So this is an important aspect of our town as we 
continue to add to our uh, to our facilities. Another project the board uh, talked about this doing starting next year is Sonia Drive sidewalk. Uh, we do have quite a bit of sidewalk on Sonia Drive, but we need to continue uh, getting it connected all the way down to Oren Road. Um, this first phase would be design and then the land and right of way acquisition in uh, in year one or FY 2022, and then the construction of that in the next year. Also, we uh, we have town hall renovations in here. The, the proposal for this year is just to really work with an architect to work on a concept uh, for the for the uh, town hall and really just it's a space that we have grown into over the last 32 plus years. Uh, and frankly, we've had people move in and we had people move out. Uh, we've had a lot of people move into different closets uh, in the town hall area. So we're trying to maximize and make this space as efficient as possible and, and get it updated. So that's why the uh, initial FY 2022 is just to work with an architect to really scope out the space, what we can maximize the space to and give us some cost estimates before we move forward. Evans Road Greenway connection. If you know where Evans Road is in the south part of town, uh, we do have a, a basically two existing greenways and we have a gap uh, in the middle and you can see where that gap is on your screen. So the idea would be to design and buy the land and the right of way in FY 2022 with construction of that greenway in FY 2023. Little Turkey Creek Greenway is also a, uh, a connection with the uh, development of the Brookmere subdivision. Uh, there was a greenway put across the front of their property and a bridge. And so this would be connecting from that bridge all the way down to the Sheffield uh, Greenway right there off of Virtue Road as well. Uh, again, FY 2022 would be for design and uh, also land and, and any kind of uh, right of way or easements that need to be attained uh, for that uh, with the hopes of doing construction in FY 2023. In our parks and recreation department and, and fun, we have, uh, we're finishing up phase three of McPhee Park right now. So another concept for us to move forward on are the bike trails and a trailhead with pavilion and lighted parking for about 30 spaces um, right there. So you can see on your screen, the orange uh, is in yellow or indicating where the trail would be. And this would be like a single track trail, uh, more uh, for hiking or mountain biking uh, type of approach. The uh, trailhead would be in yellow and it would be just to the west of the existing pavilion, large pavilion and splash pad area. Uh, and that's the proposal for next year uh, to do that project. Um, also, we uh, obviously the planning commission is going to be talking about this project tonight, but as part of the um, town center development uh, with the village green area, there's going to be uh, need to be a public restroom facility for that space with all of the various public events that we believe are going to be occurring there. And so we do have uh, dollars uh, indicated in the budget next year to work on uh, facilitating a uh, restroom facility there at the site. And you can see on your screen it's to the north and in, in red. We also have Mayor Bob Leonard Park field reconstruction. Um, the, the concept here is we have a lot of use from our rectangular fields. Um, we have tournaments every single weekend from now until I think the, uh, the end of June. And so we really could utilize and have another rectangular field if possible. So the idea would be to take out one of the baseball fields. We don't know which one yet for sure, but to take out one of the baseball fields. Uh, so that would be design this year of reconstruction of that. And then the construction of that and really the reconstruction of the other baseball field, whichever one we decide to take out in order to make it, um, you know, even, you know, even larger, even better than it is today. So all in, uh, we're looking at uh, design this year and the construction in FY 2023. Sorry. Um, another project that we did talk about also uh, at, the, at the last workshop with the Board of Mayor and Alderman is including two more tennis courts uh, with the current McPhee Park phasing. So right now there's going to be four tennis courts as part of the initial construction. And this would be to add two more tennis courts um, to that to that area, just to the I guess the west of McPhee Road. 
All right, for some of our engineering projects, I know the uh, Planning Commission is well aware that stormwater is a major uh, utility that we uh, at the Town of Farragut handle. And so with stormwater improvements, we look to put in about $200,000 per year. And this is to make the necessary uh, infrastructure repairs, maintenance, and improvements that, that are needed as we find them along the way. But the other big project that we plan on doing starting next year is to do a master plan for our stormwater system. We want to go through and map the entire stormwater uh, system throughout the town, uh, both older neighborhoods and newer neighborhoods, make sure we evaluate the pipes that we have in the ground, uh, evaluate those for um, possible repairs right away, uh, look at that system and figure out just how much this is going to cost us long term. So that's a, a long term project, but we do plan on getting that started in phase one for next fiscal year. We also have Virtue Road, uh, phase two. Now this is uh, initially, we've got some TPO funding for this uh, through the, uh, through the uh, Knox County TPO. And so the initial uh, phasing is to do NEPA, which is an environmental study and assessment along with design in the next uh, two years. And then we hope to get funding for construction uh, in, in the future. Uh, this is one of those projects that if we don't get funding, we would probably have to push back and hold off on it. But we do have funding for the first year to do the NEPA phase. And this would be picking up where we're currently uh, finishing up construction or working on construction right now, picking where that leads off and heading all the way down south from that position to Boyd, Boyd Station Road. Also, we've got Union Road improvements. I know we've been talking about Union Road for a number of years now. And uh, so the construction phase is finally ready to uh, hopefully take place in this next fiscal year, or at least start sometime this next fiscal year. Um, and this is fully funded uh, through TPO and well, obviously a portion of the town, it's an 80-20 split, but uh, the construction phase would be uh, planned for in this next fiscal year. And this would connect all the way and, and improve Union Road all the way from Everett Road uh, down to uh, the intersection with Fleener and North Hobbs and then on down to Kingston Pike. Yeah, another big study that we're gonna be doing this year is a Kingston Pike corridor study for pedestrian enhancements. Uh, we've been looking at how to really make pedestrian safety uh, more of a priority in our downtown district. Uh, so this, this is a study that uh, we'll be utilizing uh, TPO funding for. Uh, so the we'll, we'll, town will pay 15% and then the uh, TPO funding will be 85%. But this will help us really map out uh, how we can get pedestrians through that corridor in a much safer way. Also with a project that you have on your uh, on your the Planning Commission's agenda tonight uh, with the, uh, the Grove at Boyd Station down there, uh, we're also looking at improvements to Boyd Station Road. Uh, this would be uh, kind of working with the developer on this, but there's some, uh, some areas that we need to improve along with the developer, and so this would be coordinating those efforts and putting some money aside to be able to do that. And then that would be the whole length of the frontage that is uh, part of the uh, Schubert property right now, all the way down to make that improvement all the way to McPhee Road. And then we also had a lot of discussion recently at the board level about Grigsby Chapel Road, uh, one of the uh, the uh, strategic planning initiative that the board has this year is to really look at traffic mitigation along Grigsby Chapel Road. And so one of the things that they're looking at in next year's budget is to put a traffic signal at St. John Court. Uh, we've had quite a bit of discussion. I'm sure the board will still have some more uh, centered around that, but uh, certainly they wanna try to improve traffic safety in that area. And, uh, and looking at an initial study that I did send to the Planning Commission for your review, it looks like the, there are some warrants for being able to put a traffic signal there. Um, again, um, we look at other things just in warrants, but uh, certainly something that uh, we we'll want to take a look at and further and really study some more as we get into it this year. But there is some funding right now put in the budget to, uh, to make that improvement. And this just shows you, uh, the next slide, just really shows you a little bit about how a traffic signal would impact that uh, intersection right there. Um, the signal is in green on your screen. And so in the morning, you can see that it would stack and back up uh, about 350 feet um, to the west of the intersection with St. John Court. And in the afternoon, it, would, it could back up um, to around 575 feet 
uh, just with the signal being put in place and the volume of traffic that occurs there on Grigsby Chapel. So a couple of extra things to show you there. So overall, um, for FY 2022, we've got all of our, uh, again, our general government projects. Uh, we're looking to spend around a million dollars next year in general government projects, around 880,000 in park projects, and around 4.9 million in engineering projects. Again, many of those are grant funded. Uh, thankfully, the, we don't have to put as much into uh, to the general fund or the CIP funds, but uh, we do have a healthy fund balance there for our CIP that uh, we can move forward with. So that is all I'm gonna cover tonight, but I'm happy to address any other um, projects or concerns the Planning Commission may have, or I can certainly give some feedback and, and information to the Board of Mayor and Alderman for their further consideration. Does anybody have any questions for uh, David? Yes, St. Clair, a small question. Uh, on that town center restroom for uh, FY22, how is that mesh with the demolition and site work with uh, maybe that project getting started here shortly, hopefully? Is it, uh, is it perhaps maybe premature for that? Or what, what are the activities for that 300,000 in, in, uh, starting in, in what, July? Sure. Yes, uh, Ed, it, it would actually um, coordinate with their project completely. So, um, you know, depending on the timing of when they would get started, um, we would certainly coordinate with them. So we want to have the money available in case we need it for next year. Now, if it takes another, you know, year or more to to get that done, then we would just coordinate that with the development of the project. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, David, can you go back to the um, graphic of the um, Grigsby Chapel, um, St. John place? What is that court? St. John Court. Um, yes, ma'am. Traffic. Find that. Would you like this one or the next one? Um, the next one. Uh, either one matters. Okay. I, I guess it sure. doesn't matter. I guess what I'm um, asking all of you on the planning commission is: this has been a struggle for us for some time. You all know that we've we've gone through various rezoning requests, and whenever something pops up on Grigsby Chapel, um, the citizens come in, and the residents on this in this corridor are re really struggle during peak hours to get um, in and out of their neighborhoods safely or feel safe. Um, and we struggled at the board level. Um, I kept thinking this really needed to be a, a, an in-depth conversation at the planning commission level for recommendation. Right now we have a, a space holder for funding to put a light at uh, St. John Court, which met three warrants. Uh, Fretz Road met two um, and kind of want to take some time to really dig in and analyze what's going on here. Um, certainly don't want to make uh, things worse, but the only, the only really during peak hours, the only pe um, people that this road works for is the people that are using it as an arterial or a major collector. The people that live along this road, and there's about, I counted up, there's, there's over 700 homes that have to access Grigsby Chapel Road to go anywhere. Um, and that's that's quite a bit of homes that are um, residents that are impacted by by the difficulties that they're seeing with the, the, the high rate of speed and the constant traffic in the morning and the evening. So I'm not sure how you all feel about, um, is this something that we need to maybe have a as a, an agenda item at some point? Do you feel comfortable with leaving this as a space holder for traffic sing signal funding? and then having an in-depth conversation at some point where we can really dig into the data, have more data taken about what's going on with the various um, intersections uh, along this uh, route to see if uh, a traffic light is gonna cause the, uh, create the kind of gaps that we're hoping that it creates for people to be able to get out of their neighborhoods. I'd just like some of your input on that um, and I'm gonna be quiet now. Well, my concern when I looked at this chart was trying to understand the roundabout cues versus the signal cues and seeing the, uh, and trying to understand why 
there's just looking at that data alone, it looks like a roundabout is a winner based on the queue. And our problem with the roundabout was all that does is make that intersection very efficient. And then it makes uh, getting out of the neighborhoods further down um, more difficult to get out because you just have a very constant traffic. So yeah, the idea with the traffic light was one, it made that intersection safer, but two, uh, would create some gaps further down the road for uh, the folks that are trying to get out of their neighborhoods further down the road. Yes, so I just didn't, like, see that, didn't see that data, so I don't. Yeah, well, and that's the, we don't have that, I mean, obviously with a the light, there's going to be a timing where, where you do create some gap. We don't know what that is. We don't know what that looks like, but if we're creating any gaps um, that people can get out on, um, that's kind of what we're looking at. We know we're not going to get that with a roundabout. Commissioner St. Clair, also a roundabout, this is David. Uh, also, the roundabout may, if we try to put it there, could be the most expensive roundabout in the history well, of the town of Farragut. I'm, I'm just looking at the traffic flow that I, I, I hadn't even gotten to the uh, engineering part of just actually putting something there versus the city. There's <laughs> there's a lot of properties that uh, we'd have to purchase probably or or damage to to fit that in there. It's a pretty tight space. Uh, Commissioner Russ, I think it would it would work you us to look at the three way stop versus a signal light and lay those side by side and see what that queue looks like and what the stacking looks like. Um, the three way stop seems to be efficient. Um, at Smith Road, it's already um, shown there. That's the worst. If you look that is, at okay, that's in red the all way. Yes. So, it, but but what is it the worst because it. It doesn't mitigate the flow or it just keeps it flowing where there's no additional access for the length of Grigsby Chapel. It backs up the traffic. I, I'm surprised. This is Commissioner Myers. I really thought that the three way stop was going to be the easiest because the three way stops at Andover and Hickory Woods seemed to work pretty well. But when I, when I saw this, I was very surprised that the traffic is stacked all the way to Smith Road, which is going to create absolute gridlock for any of those folks that live in that stretch. There's a little neighborhood called Ox Cove, I believe, and then a couple of residents. So I, I my my thought, I'm now leaning towards the signal. Obviously, I'm a big fan yeah. of the roundabout. I do think we need to create the gaps further west on Grisby Chapel for those residents. Um, but um, the, like I said, my initial thought was the, the three-way stop was the easiest and the cheapest. But based upon this empirical data from the traffic engineer, uh, the three-way stops, I think we would be creating an absolute nightmare for the folks that, that live on Greasby Chapel. This is uh, Mayor Williams. Uh, one of the things that we uh, looked at is, at, as a board was uh, different ways to, to, uh, to work the, uh, the problem. And, and the real problem, there's a problem here with, with people in the morning that live back in these neighborhoods, getting out of, uh, of the, uh, the, the one way that they can go. There's, there's just one way to get in and out and, and it's an issue. And of course, uh, to compound that, you also have a situation with uh, the school traffic, uh, the Catholic school traffic. So between the two of them, uh, you've got a lot of cars that uh, in, in, in the morning that are trying to get out. Now, uh, if her and right's not such a big deal out of there, but uh, uh, if you're going to the freeway or to work on down uh, Parkside or wherever, and you're having to turn left. And uh, of course, the thing about it is, whenever you look at the traffic that's coming from uh, on Smith Road, uh, from both directions, you know, from it's headed north and then you also have it where it's headed east and they have that stop sign. And uh, so what you've got there is uh, uh, a situation where the cars that stop that's headed east um, versus cars that stop headed north, the ones that are headed north usually have about a four and a half second stop. The ones that are headed east have about a six and a, six and a half second stop. So if you, if you have a light, uh, say a two minute light, then what you're gonna do is you're going to uh, back traffic up uh, all the way up to the stop sign. Uh, and then of course it'll turn, it would turn uh, 
uh, green and, and that would flush the system. Uh, so you, you look at it one way, then when you go on down and let's look at the rest of the road because uh, what Louise is talking about is uh, very important that you have gaps on down the road so that those people can uh, get out of their neighborhoods. So, um, and there's quite a few down through there. So the other thing that we looked at was a light at, uh, uh, at Fritz. And, you know, Fritz don't really have a whole lot of traffic coming out of there in the morning, but they do have traffic coming out. But uh, out of the, um, the uh, two neighborhoods, well, the apartments and the, and the other neighborhood, so you do have a certain amount coming out of there, but what we looked at at Fritz was the possibility of that one, uh, that light, uh, helping the gaps uh, where you've got a short amount of, of uh, travel room from Fritz down to, uh, let's say, the crosswalk there uh, on Grigsby Chapel. And you've got a lot of uh, density as far as neighborhoods right there uh, that are trying to get out in the morning, and, and there's, they're the ones that seem to have the most trouble as opposed to the others up through there. So picking the the choice is one of the two uh, to look at something that will give the gaps that will help everybody uh, and not just focus on, on just one particular uh, light at one particular location. If it And the study tells you, if you look at, of course, we don't have but one study here. We don't have the one at Fritz. Uh, in front of us, but there's two studies to look at, and Louise's idea of us looking at this uh, a lot closer on the planning commission level is a good idea because um, what we don't want to do is, is, is you know, back uh, with a two-minute lap, back traffic all the way up to where you, you've got gridlock up the uh, stop sign, but yet we need to get those people out of there to go to work, and the people that are taking their kids to school, we've got to get them out of there. So the... <laughs> It's a tough choice. Uh, there's a lot that needs to be, a lot more to be looked at in my opinion, because what they had before was a traffic uh, person that would, uh, you know, actually stand out there, block the cars coming in both directions and get the people out of there in the morning. And that worked fine, but they no longer have that person. So what we have to look at is, is the choices that to be made uh, along that line versus uh, the possibility of the gaps that it would uh, give us. And, you know, and that's something, to, it'd be more of a whole, a whole Grigsby Chapel Road study to see what kind of gaps you have, uh, you know, and how that would work out. Because whatever we do, we need to make sure that we do this in a smart manner to where it helps people, but it does not uh, put us in a position to where we make something worse because we're trying to help something else. So uh, I think a, a, a longer term study on this, I mean, we've got time. Uh, I think we really need to look at this. I mean, and, and right now the schools there is going on. So you get the most traffic at this moment when you've got um, the school and the folks trying to get out of their neighborhood their own, or their neighborhoods that are back in there and uh, where in the summer, uh, you, you'll not have the uh, Catholic school in session, so it will show the differential between the two. And, and I think that will tell you how effective the crossing guard would be. Um, and uh, we found out that a crossing guard can be trained uh, to do that and, and maybe have somebody in the morning and afternoon. But, and, and that's just one option of, of uh, the, the options that you see. A, a roundabout is definitely out of the question because we we can't afford to buy that guy's house put a roundabout there. And like, like we said, uh, yeah, it helps traffic flow, but it does not give the gap that we need to get the people out of the neighborhoods uh, effectively. I mean, somebody sitting there waiting uh, 30 seconds to a minute, you know, that that's fine. But if they're sitting there and there's a, a Congo line of train of, of cars going down through there and, and they sit there for three, four or five minutes and all of a sudden it's backing up behind them then uh, that's that's what we've got to look at. And I think a little bit uh, longer term study would, would give us uh, probably the best information to make the best choice here to where we can have the gaps, get the people out of the neighborhoods. And uh, uh, there's not a perfect, it's not, there's not gonna be a perfect answer. It's gonna, it's gonna be some uh, pain for, for some, but 
if it can help others and, and make this flow better, uh, I think we'd be uh, ahead of the game. That's all I have. This is Commissioner Green. I have this is Commissioner Green. I have a recommendation. This agenda item is about the CIP. So I direct this is all good information, but it sounds like we need a workshop or a separate meeting to go over this intersection, the other intersection, as as the mayor said, the the, old, the whole concept of that of Grigsby Chapel. So I think this is better to be put off for another meeting. I, I guess what I'm asking for is the recommendation that we certainly leave this funding in place um, as we uh, as a placeholder as we we pursue this uh, this Grigsby Chapel corridor study, but um, with the intention that we certainly um, would love to. Um, finally, find a solution for these folks, or even a stage solution. Let's put one piece of the puzzle in place and see how that works, and then and move on from there. So, I guess that's what I'm asking of this this that, body. That sounds good. I think anybody who travels down through there realizes there's a problem, and if we can do something about it, um, we certainly want to put that on the agenda. This is Commissioner Bellamy. Uh, so the budget is, is 280,000 that you're wanting to hold Vice Mayor Pavlin? Yes, that's the budget for a traffic signal in that area, but certainly um, uh, that's our budget can, we can amend a budget throughout the year if we need to, but to me that, that, that puts, it, puts it in a place really for the folks to see that we're working on this. This is something that um, we, we want to kind of wrap our arms around and make sure that we're, we're making the right decisions. So, I guess what I'm asking more specifically, is this enough to fund one red light or two? Just the one. Okay, thank yeah. you. And does this include, this is Chairman Holliday, does it, this include uh, the traffic study, additional traffic study, or is additional traffic study needed? Yes, Chairman Holliday, think, this, uh, this is okay. David. It, this does include additional study work to be done in the corridor to try to determine if we added a traffic light here, how is that going to impact other neighborhoods, uh, both east and west of the area, and see how that flow uh, interacts with those neighborhoods too. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments? So the conclusion with this is that we will, for this particular item, we will um, continue on with a workshop or a discussion at another planning commission meeting on this specific item. That's the recommendation, yes. Okay. Um, also, does anybody have any more questions or comments on any other items? How quickly would we be able to do another traffic study before we workshop? Or would we workshop it first and then do a study, another study? Well, this this uh, this is David again. This uh, this area may take us uh, a little bit of time to go and do some additional study work because there are quite a few entrances that come and go uh, off of Grigsby Chapel. So I couldn't give you a precise timeline right now, uh, but we could certainly bring it back before we do any kind of design work. Certainly on any kind of signal and get your feedback on. You know, just let you know what the study came back and showed. And uh, if the planning commission thinks that we ought to do some additional work on that, we can we can add to it. Thank you, sir. Now, I would think the study would just also not only look at putting the signal there, but what the operation of the signal is it going to be 24 7? Is it going to be different peak times? Is it going to be operate during the summer when school is not in session? You know, there's all kinds of questions on just how you would even operate that, that signal to me. And then how that ties into maybe our automated system too. So. And Commissioner St. Clair, that was one of my things that I was thinking about as well. Um, so uh, I appreciate you bringing that up because that was a thought of mine too. And yeah, we're just scratching the surface on this. We know it has to be worked on. Yeah, it's uh, a problem. <laughs> it's, it's a problem. And that's uh, not very better. <laughs> We're fortunate we've got Union Road. That's one of our substandard roads that's being worked on. We've got Virtue that's being worked on. Uh, this, this one here, although it's you know a fine road, uh, the traffic pattern is, in my opinion, substandard. Okay. Any more questions or comments for this one? 
So we need a motion in a second, I guess. Well, are there any other questions for on any of the other items with the uh, improvement plan, capital improvement plan? If not, Mark, do we or David, do we uh, vote on this or are we just recommending? You're recommending. So if the planning commission could uh, make a motion in a second to recommend recommend approval of the CIP to the board of mayor and aldermen, then uh, then that would be the motion to put on the floor. Okay. Mr. Commissioner I have... Blair, I recommend that we uh, uh, recommend this plan to the uh, board of mayor and aldermen. Second. Fire second. second. Okay, I have uh, this is Mark. Um, Commissioner St. Clair making a motion to recommend approval to CIP to the Board of Mayor and Alderman, seconded by Commissioner Myers. Um, we'll do a roll call on that. Um, Commissioner Green. Commissioner Green. Commissioner, Commissioner Green. Oh, sorry. Aye. Okay, Commissioner Dick. Aye. Chairman Holliday. Aye. Commissioner Bellamy. Commissioner Bellamy, aye. Uh, Commissioner Myers. Commissioner Myers, aye. Uh, Vice Mayor Poblin. Vice Mayor Poblin, aye. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, aye. Mr. St. Clair. Mr. St. Clair, aye. Mr. Russ. Commissioner Russ, aye. All right, and the uh, motion passes by a vote of nine to zero. Can everyone see the the PowerPoint for the FMPC agenda now? We got it. Yes. yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay, then we're moving on to item number four. Discussion and public hearing on a resubdivision plat for lot one of the Edward Johnson subdivision, 354 Boring Road, 2.61 acres, two lots, zone R-2, Rome Land Surveying Applicant. Okay, we talked about this last month. Uh, this is a minor resubdivision along Boring Road. Boring Road is classified as a collector street. And in our subdivision regulations, a pedestrian facility is required to be constructed in association with a subdivision uh, that abuts a collector street. So the applicant had requested a variance uh, from that requirement. And um, we talked a little bit with the planning commission and the applicant last month. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the staff mentioned that this property already has a 20 foot wide water line easement first utility district that runs across the entire frontage of the property. Um, and uh, staff was asked to uh, work with first utility district to see if they would be uh, okay with a potential pedestrian easement uh, in that same general area. And uh, Staff has uh, contacted uh, First Utility District um, and they are fine with uh, pedestrian facility easement being within their entire 20 foot uh, wide water line easement. So rather than uh, granting a variance from this requirement, uh, which could potentially, you know, set a precedent uh, that we may want to think about. Uh, the staff would recommend that this plat would just need to create a pedestrian facility easement within the existing water line easement that first utility district has. Um, and that way there wouldn't, there wouldn't be any additional encumbrances on the property. Uh, it basically would be within the same physical space as the existing easement. And that should give um, plenty of room to put a walking trail and a grass strip if that's what the facility is desired in the future uh, when that becomes uh, an appropriate time to provide that facility. So that would be our recommendation as far as this plat. Another consideration with the plat is how to address um, the 
future construction of a pedestrian facility along the frontage. Um, this property does not, there, there aren't any walking trails or sidewalks that step into this property, unlike the Smith property that was resubdivided to the east uh, a couple of months ago. So if you were to put a facility there right now, it would kind of be out in space and unconnected uh, at each end of the property. So due to the timing consideration, one thing that the staff noted that we've done in the past in some of these situations is have the town attorney work with the applicant on a, uh, a uh, pedestrian construction covenant that basically at the appropriate time, it would um, require the whoever the property owner or owners are at that point to uh, work with the town to um, put in the pedestrian facility. Um, and, and like I said, we've used that uh, three or four different locations in the town. Um, the other option would be for, you know, when the time is right, the town would be uh, putting in the facility within the pedestrian facility easement that would be recommended with this plat. Um, just based on current cost, um, and it's, again, this is very rough and approximate, um, to put a facility across that entire frontage would be a, around $20,000 at this point. Uh, there may not be uh, a facility built there for many years, who knows? Uh, again, it's kind of development driven. Uh, so, you know, it's very uncertain, obviously, as to what the cost would be at that point. Uh, but I think that's something that uh, needs to be clarified with this plat uh, so that there's some guidance that gets recorded uh, as to how that facility uh, would be uh, installed at the, uh, when the time is, is appropriate for that. Um, Mark, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I add uh, information uh, that would be helpful for the planning commission sure. to understand for precedent? Um, when we were working on the Union Road um, project, um, figuring out where uh, the walking trail should uh, cross Union Road, um, I was looking at a, the um, various properties and came across Doris Henning's property at 112 North Hobbs Road. And when she subdiv subdivided her property in 2014, she was required to um, dedicate a walking trail easement um, along the Union Road portion of her property, uh, but she was not required to put in the trail, just um, required to uh, allow for the easement so that when Union Road was eventually improved, there was uh, a place where we could put our trail, which we are constructing on our own through the Union Road project. So there is precedent for allowing for a trail to an uh, easement to be created and not requiring the property owner to um, build a, uh, a the walking trail. Yeah, we've had easements planted like that quite quite often. Uh, that's that's true. Yep. Uh, Mayor Williams, uh, us, we just need to make sure that regardless of who the property owner is uh, going forward, I mean, if it's sold or whatever, then uh, if it is again subdivided, that they would put that it would be their responsibility to go ahead and put it in in this easement. Yeah, I mean, this easement, the recommendation from the staff that at a minimum, the easement would be platted at this time with this resubdivision plat. And again, the, as to who puts it in in the future, I think that also needs to be reflected on this plat. Um, it could be through a plat note of the action taken by the Planning Commission. If there is a covenant that ends up being recommended, that would have to be addressed on the plat as well so that so that you have a document in addition to the deed or covenant, a uh, mapped document that memorializes basically the process for how the pedestrian facility would be uh, provided at the appropriate time. Rita, do you need a motion before we start discussion or do we hear from the applicant first? You do need a motion and second on any item. So you okay. need to go ahead and do that. I probably should I'm gonna have done go that ahead already. And, I'm going to go ahead and make a motion on the variance to uh, require uh, the uh, uh, walking trail easement 
um, but um, not require the um, applicant to um, fund a the sidewalk that will go there. I hope that's correctly stated. Yeah, we need that's more fine. clarity because we needed as far as the timing on who would do what. Yeah. So the the town would be town of Farragut would be responsible for constructing uh, the sidewalk when um, that time comes. Why? Wow. Uh, because it, we have no idea when that that sidewalk will ever will be built or um, will if there will be a connection there. Is that the hardship, Louise? Norm normally, with a variance, we we try to list I and mean, include the hardship in the motion. To me, that's the hardship. If okay. do you guys agree? Is there another hardship? Well, we can you're list? not granting. You're not granting a variance. You no. know, a variance would be to basically say you don't have to put it in ever. You're not saying that okay. if with this. No, we're not. They're going to somebody's going to have to build it. I mean, we're not varying from the requirement to build it. It's just a question of timing and how that is memorialized on this plat before you. Well, the and, property, and I think, owner, if property owner uh, sells it or subdivides it in order to uh, do a little small subdivision or whatever. Uh, if they're selling it, they're, they're selling it for profit. Uh, I don't think that we should be the one to put the sidewalk in. Uh, in. In that case, I think the property owner at the time, whoever that may be, would be the one that would uh, would put the sidewalk in. And we Mark, have, well, Mark, uh, we have a mo first of all, we have a motion on the floor from uh, Vice Mayor Poblin. Does anybody want to second the motion that she made? Well, it's incorrect. It's sucks. incorrect because she asked for a variance, and we're not doing a variance here. Okay, I, I oh, withdraw okay. my motion then. Okay. Does anybody want to make an amended motion? The applicant is here, and they can. We'll have them speak to this as well if you want. Um, does anybody have an amended motion? It's really kind of two parts we're dealing with. One is just to uh, say that the. We're going to use the first utility district <laughs> easement for the for the walking uh, uh, trail or the sidewalk, and then that, I guess I'm unclear on exactly what we're word our wording would be on what the mayor's bringing up relative to the timing. So, can we put that in one motion, or do we need to make a two step process out of it so we clearly understand what we're doing? If it's more clear for you all to address those separately, then that's I think that's fine. Um, anything that needs to be clarified or, or addressed on this plat, we need to take action on it. That's, that's to me, the bottom line. To me, this is Commissioner Myers, I think the real crux of what we're dealing with is we've got an applicant that's that's willing to dedicate the easement. And probably just because yeah. there's a utility easement that's there um, doesn't necessarily mean that we have the right to use it as a walking trail. So there probably is some additional easement dedication that needs to occur. But really what we're dealing with, what, at least what how I interpret it, is we're dealing with who's going to pay for the walking trail and at when will that occur. It, it, is that is my interpretation correct, Mark? Yeah, because if the applicant or property owner is going to pay for it, then we probably need to, because of the timing, consideration then we need to recommend a some kind of a legal mechanism like a completion covenant that we talked about last month and that would be um, ultimately the instrument number for that would be recorded and reflected on the plat of record so um, if if you all want to just say all we want is for them to plat the easement and then it's you know the town would be responsible for doing it then that you know we wouldn't need to worry about a covenant or anything because we'll have the easement that the physical space to do it uh, at the appropriate time but if we're if we're going to bind a property owner to it we need to make sure this plat uh, memorializes that i kind of like what the mayor was saying is that if if they sell the property at some point in the future or further subdivide the property then that triggers the property owner at that time and they can negotiate with the new buyer or the existing 
um, owner to then fund the cost of the um, the cost of the walking trail. Now, if the town of Farragut, if they don't, you know, let's say they don't sell the property for 10 years and the town of Farragut determines that it's time, just like we do all over the town, to uh, install a walking trail, then the town of Farragut can include it in the CIP. But so the, I think that's kind of where where I'm leaning is that, um, and we've done this, that there was there's a parcel over off of Turkey Creek Road that recently, once it changed hands, they had to abandon the old driveway and do another driveway. So there's ways to put plat notes in there that triggers these sorts of things <laughs> that would require if they sell the property again, then they would pay for it. And it's very well, they may stay there for 10 or 20 or 30 years. And then the town of Farragut may just determine that it's time to go ahead and make the connections. Is, is, um, is anybody else kind of on board? I think the mayor, my interpretation of what the mayor just said, he's on board with that. Is anybody else on board with that kind of philosophy? I've so got what it. you're talking about, Noah, is if because he couldn't resubdivide one R dash two, it's not big enough. But if they were to resubdivide one R dash one uh, in the future, that that would need to be the the provision of the pedestrian facility would need to be addressed with the planning commission as part of that plat. Is that what you're talking about? Or or if it changes title, let's say it changes. Um, title that is, you know, not a non-related person, a third party that comes in and purchases one R-1. Well, that's something that I don't think the town needs to really be involved with because that's, we don't really know those kind of things and normally get involved with that kind of stuff. I think if they physically subdivided that lot one more time, um, that might be a, a way to address this issue again in the future with a re, with the that resubdivision plat um, and may I, uh, and there is a Marco, can i read from that the subdivision plat that they did for um miss henning's property the last line and it's clear as mud it says upon further subdivision or development of lot whatever it is a walking trail sidewalk will be constructed along north hobbs road and union road frontages it doesn't say by whom. So I don't know. There, that's not entirely clear. So no, this is well, Commissioner and Green. that's exactly what I'm trying to make clear on this plat. If we don't yeah. want, if we want this property owner or whoever owns this pro these properties in the future, because it would run with the land if it was a covenant, then that needs to be addressed now with this plat. If we want to just leave it kind of you know, open ended and not really tie them to it, then yeah, it's probably going to end up being the town do it because, you know, uh, there's no, I mean, we got the easement. We would have the easement if it's approved like this, but, you know, it by implication, it's probably going to be the town that would do it at that point. Mark, this is uh, Chairman Holiday. I have a question, uh, something else to throw out there uh, to muddy this even more. If we, um, what does precedent does this set for other properties on that road? Well, uh, the two properties that were part of the Smith subdivision to the east that were house lots um, did have an existing trail that stubbed into the eastern one to extend it on. So that would be a fairly quick pedestrian facility extension. This is more uncertain as far as when that may occur because we don't know when either property, uh, for, you know, either the larger Smith tract or the Jones tract to uh, may, nothing may happen to those for 15, 20 years, who knows? Um, so, but like Louise said, well, there are plats uh, that we've approved that just have the easement. Uh, establish the easement and that that has happened and it's you know it's it's really more of just you all need to understand that if if the property owner doesn't do it then the town probably is going to have to do it and you know and that's just something that needs to be um, discussed and and weighed in on uh, as to whether that seems to be appropriate because you're not really based on the staff's motion you're not a recommendation you're not granting a variance so we're not really setting a precedent 
we're we're basically just kind of trying to deal with the timing of it. Um, I think if you were to say that lot one R one, if that were to further subdivide, uh, redivide, that the the planning commission, uh, you know, would be revisiting the how the facility uh, would be uh, installed. Um, because that way, you know, you're getting another house lot on that. Um, and uh, that may be a way to deal with it as far as tying a property owner to it, if you wanted to, to do it that way. Because um, that lot is big enough to where you could subdivide it into another lot. So. And there's or also pro become... pro property to the east, I mean, to the west as well. Yeah. So, yeah, the yeah, lot to the west is undeveloped, and um, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know of any plans to do anything with it. It may or may not be large enough to be subdivided. Uh, it probably is, uh, but definitely not more than two lots out of that. And that's with a different owner? Yeah, it's a different owner. Mm -hmm. This is Commissioner Myers. I, I'm comfortable moving forward with with removing the requirement to construct the pedestrian facility uh, contingent upon no further subdivision of lot 1R-1. So if 1R-1 gets further subdivided, then there needs to be a plat note in there that at least somebody at public record will be able to look at and say, hey, I need to go talk to the town of Farragut because there may be a walking trail or a sidewalk required at this location. This is Commissioner Green. Isn't that built into the statute if they redivide, if they subdivide our one R? Well, it would be well, something y'all would have to act on if they requested a variance to not put a pedestrian facility in as part of that resubdivision yeah. plat, just like but, but to right put now. but to put one in would already be built into the process, right? Well, the easement, we're recommending that at a minimum, the easement the gets platted with this no, plat. I, I think we all today. agree on the easement. I don't think that's an issue. Everybody agrees, I think, that, that the easement is is proper. We may have to say some words that we can use the existing easement for the purposes of a pedestrian walkway or uh, trail. But the actual implementation of the sidewalk, I think if we just don't address it right now, it would become automatically addressed if lot yeah, 1R that's true. becomes yep. subdivided. Otherwise, it just becomes open-ended. And, and as uh, Vice Mayor Pavlin said, eventually, if everything else got a sidewalk and then we, the town decides that really we need a sidewalk there. Because I'm, I'm kind of against us imposing that, a, that an existing resident has to put a sidewalk at this point in time. It's kind of a backfitting, you know, when they bought the property, there was no requirement. And now we're kind of going to backfit. And I understand that's the way the regulation reads, but I still have some problem with it. If I had a lot there and all of a sudden somebody told me I had to put a $20,000 sidewalk across there, I'd certainly have a problem with it. So, again, I think if we could agree to the easement and utilize that at some point in time, if necessary, for the walk, for a walking pedestrian trail, and that no requirement for a trail at this time uh, exists. Do you want to make, does somebody want to make a motion and second on something like that? If that's how you feel. Um, Commissioner Green, was that a motion? That was a motion. I make also, a motion. motion. I make a motion that the easement, the existing eas easement can be utilized in the future for a for pedestrian trail and that there is no immediate need for the installation of the sidewalk at this time and the installation can be determined at a later date. I second. So you'd be platting the easement as part of this plat, and um, and then yeah, it plat, just, the, plat the easement, but not the requirement. When it gets built, it's just based on development in the nearby area, I guess. Okay. That sounds good. I'd still like to see a plat note on there referencing this, because I, I think it's when these properties get sold, a lot of times folks come in and say, well, I didn't know, but if, if it's mm -hmm. a plat note on, on the plat of record, 
then nobody can say, well, I didn't know that there may be a sidewalk or walking trail required. Again, we pick Meaning up on the, in the subdivision regulations, but I think it's it's just better to try to be as transparent as possible and include that as a as a plat note. He's on, yeah, he's talking the, about if lot one R one is further sub resubdivided, that yeah. it's clear that that the requirement for that facility may occur as a result of that and need to be constructed at that time with that resubdivision plat. I, that's what I think Commissioner Myers is saying. And that you, does you make are, sense because it's I, very I'm, clear. I'm hearing it differently. I think uh, Commissioner Green's point was the fact that the normal process, you came back to read to subdivide that, it's already built into the process to deal with it. Well, the, the good and value of that is to say if it changes hands, I'm, I'm interpreting what Noah was saying is if it just changes hands, not necessarily a resubdivision. If it just changes hands, then, they, then it would be required. Well, I look at this an albatross on the sale of that piece of property. Ed, I'm going to back on the changing hands. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to uh, pursue the changing hands triggering the sidewalk action or the sidewalk construction. But I do think a plat note is important. The reason being is that we do have a track record. Well, I wouldn't say a track record. We do have multiple precedents in the town of Farragut when folks do what's called simple subdivision, which is basically taking one lot and creating two. We have granted this variance in the past at multiple locations in the town of Farragut. So I'm not worried about the slippery slope. However, in years from now, when somebody brings one R-1, to us or say hey we're only taking one lot and creating two lots so we uh we you know you've done this before so we don't want to have to build a sidewalk i think a plat note memorializes that hey we've already granted you a kind of a one-time variance for creating the one r-2 and so now this any further subdivision is going to trigger or may trigger uh, some sort of pedestrian facility i i really would like to I, th I think it's in the best interest of, of everybody involved to have it in a plat note. I'm comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it's a requirement we were stating it there. I mean, it's it's fine with me. Yeah, yeah it does yeah. no harm. It doesn't, it doesn't detract from the property. No. There's a redundancy there, and that's fine. <laughs> it's a, is the, uh, Eamon, you're the owners here. It, I see him on the screen there. I don't, uh, we've kind of been talking about their property without his input so <laughs> if you if you got something <laughs> it looks sounds like what we're recommending here it looks like is to having the easement platted with the in the first utility district easement and then uh, a plat note applied that if that larger lots further resubdivided that it'll have to be taken to the planning commission and the planning commission may at that time require the facility to go ahead and be constructed by the the subdivider at that time have we got yeah. a motion and a second? We had a motion Mayor. from Commissioner uh, Green and um, Commissioner Myers second. kind of added to that. With well, I Myers. seconded C Commissioner Green, so Commissioner Green Good. might need to amend his motion, but we do have a motion and a second on the floor. Okay. So we can, open can amend the motion to include information in the plat that resubdivision of the plot would require, I guess, a okay. reconsideration of the yeah of the installation of construction the of the facility at that time yeah right. okay. and i'll second I'll sec that i'll second the amendment no i have to second it because he's making oh you did amendment. yeah i'm sorry Lee. i got it i'm gonna have to go you through all it. that okay okay uh and now i'll just yeah if the owner has, has some <laughs> comments i guess if that there's questions about what we've discussed <clears throat> most everything that could be said has been I appreciate the discussion um, and thank you for that precedent on Union Road, uh, Vice Mayor Pavlin. Uh, that, that's sort of what we were getting at when we originally brought this to the, the town. You know, originally we had requested just a full on variance uh, to have to, you know, not not deal with it at all. Uh, you know, the, the original property, this whole tract, it's been in the family, you know, over 100 years, my granddaddy's and it's my parents that live there now, so they're splitting off this R-2 for us to move in there. So it's not a, to the mayor's point, it's not a profit thing on their part. It's just a family gift to build another house. Um, 
so yeah, what we got comfortable with last month was the easement of, you know, at some point in time, if sidewalks and walking trails come on that side of Boring Road also, great, I'll run on them. But we did not want to be encumbered with, you know, shelling out the cash to build them uh, ourselves since since they've been there for, you know, a long time. So uh, that's that's really the only thing that um, mom and dad and myself were, were concerned about, you know, 20 grand, probably more than that when it comes time to build it is is not much for a town and it's a whole lot for us. Um, so as, as long as that's clear on on our end, you know, we're we're a okay with the easement and stuff. Okay, I'll yeah, any, I'll any other questions on our end? I'll get with your surveyor if he's not in the call and so that he can um, add that easement language and then the plat note that we talked about if that ends up being the planning commission's uh, action on this. Okay, so Mark, we have a first and a second. Is everybody clear on this and we're ready to vote? Okay. So um, it would this is Commissioner Bellman. It would require a notice and a plat map. Yes. Okay. As I'm all for that. Myers, the title attorneys will thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great suggestion. So that it's clear if somebody were thinking about subdividing that other lot in the future and maybe a different owner, they know ahead of time what could what they could have to to do as a result of that. So, okay. So uh, I'll, Mark, yeah. one question. So, like, if it's just our family there for 50 years, we're not going to have to fool with it, right? The language y'all are talking about is is if dad sells his land or I sell mine again, That's then right. it comes yeah. back up. At, okay. Yeah, then it would come back to the planning commission for yeah. a reconsideration well, no, of that. That's not necessarily, I don't think that's the motion. I think they could sell 1R-1 and they could sell 1R-2. Yeah, doesn't yeah. That's the only right. thing that triggers a relook at this is if 1R-1 is it's subdivided. Yeah. Okay, so only in that circumstance yeah, of another right. subdivision. Okay. Right, yeah, yeah. Or it could be a, a subdivision that combines the two back again. Well, again, <laughs> it, <laughs> the key is it has to come back. It, whatever, it has to come back. With that yeah. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah, if you physically alter the property line, it's it's likely to have to come back to the planning commission, and then this aspect of the subdivision process would be revisited. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. that's basically what it would be. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'll read off the commissioners. Uh, everybody's clear on the motion and second. I believe Commissioner Green. Commissioner Green, aye. Commissioner Dick. I don't have to abstain. I missed most of that. I don't know what happened. I couldn't hear the conversations and my okay. cat the problem. Okay. Uh, hold on one minute. Let me get that. And you gotta watch the cats. Uh, a couple of those. <laughs> um Chairman Holiday. Aye. Commissioner Bellamy. Commissioner Bellamy, aye. Commissioner Myers. Commissioner Aye. Vice Mayor Pavlin. Vice Mayor Pavlin, aye. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, aye. Mr. St. Clair. Mr. St. Clair, aye. Mr. Russ. Commissioner Russ, aye. All right, the motion passes 8 0 with Commissioner Dick abstaining. Now we need to take action on the plat itself. Um, and the staff recommends approval. Um, Subject to the provision of the pedestrian facility easement along both lots, the flat note that reflects the action taken by the planning commission, which is in there, and then obtaining all required signatures. Uh, with that, the staff recommends approval of the plat no, no itself. A, a motion to approve subject to those three items. No, okay. Uh, okay, Myers. Mayor Pavlin second. And Pavlin second. Commissioner Green. Aye. Commissioner Dick. Aye. Chairman Holiday. Uh, Chairman, Chairman Holiday, Holiday, aye. Commissioner Bellamy. Commissioner Bellamy, aye. Commissioner Myers. Commissioner Myers, aye. Vice Mayor Pollan. 
Vice Mayor Pavlin, aye. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, aye. Commissioner St. Clair. Commissioner St. Clair, aye. Commissioner Russ. Commissioner Russ, aye. Uh, and the motion on the plat passes 9-0. Moving on to item number five, discussion and public hearing on the zoning map amendment request for the property referenced as parcel 069 tax map 142 north of the old Ingalls building, 20 acres to change the zoning from R-1 rural single family residential to R-2 general single family residential to R-6 multifamily residential, Horn Properties Incorporated. That's R-1 and R-2 to R-6. Okay, we've uh, discussed this item last, uh, for a couple of planning commission workshop sessions. Um, and a staff has brought up at, as the request is presented at this time, uh, it's not consistent with the future land use map. Uh, the property is the area in the, in the rectangles, the area that's requested for the rezoning, it's shown as medium density residential, which caps the density to eight units per acre and the request for the zoning district is 12 units per acre. So um, it's inconsistent with the future land use map as presented. Of course, the applicant could always request an amendment to the map um, or amend the zoning map. Um, request and that could be certainly revisited but as it's presented now the staff uh, does not support resolution PC 21-04 uh, because uh, the request is inconsistent with the future land use map uh, in the comprehensive land use plan and the rezoning request is uh, is incomplete as well there these rezonings that increase the density on properties you know we require we changed our driveways and other access ways ordinance a few years ago to require a traffic impact study to be based on the hypothetical development of a property so that before the planning commission makes a recommendation to the board of mayor and alderman on a rezoning request that they have as much information as as they can get to make and informed recommendation. The traffic impact study is critical to that, and we don't have that at this point. So for that reason as well, uh, the staff again cannot support uh, resolution PC-21-04, which recommends approval of the rezoning through ordinance 21-06. And I do have some citizen comments after you all make a motion and second on this. Chairman um, Haldad, I'd like to make a motion. Um, to deny the zoning map amendment request based on the failure to submit a traffic impact study as is required in section 22-147A1 of the driveways and other access ways ordinance as found in chapter 22, article five of the Farragut Municipal Code. Do I have a second? Commissioner Dick seconds. Okay. We don't have got a question this is more of a robert's rules thing do we not need to make a motion in the affirmative and if we want to vote it down then we can vote it down I mean, is it, what can, can somebody chime in on that I, I we have to i know we have to make a uh, uh we are referring something to um the board of mayor and aldermen and mm -hmm. um i don't know how to make a uh, a motion in the affirmative when we are missing a, a critical part that the ordinance requires be part of the zoning uh, request. So it's it's not a complete application without a traffic impact study. So it it. Um, okay. The resolution, yeah, the resolution recommends approval of the rezoning through ordinance twenty one dash oh six. So I think what. Vice Mayor Pavlin was saying was that she doesn't support the resolution. And that's the, that this, this is the, the confusing thing about Robert's rules. This application is not complete. It, the, the resolution isn't even ready to go to the planning commission. I mean, to the board of mayor and aldermen because the zoning request is incomplete. Then would we be better off Mark if we just, uh, do not have a motion at all and it's tabled because of no motion? No, no, you need to act on it. 
Yeah, we need to act. But we don't necessarily we don't necessarily have to act in the affirmative or the negative. There's not. I I just want to make sure we're we're crossing T's and dotting I's here and doing it correctly. I think it just needs to be clear that you have a resolution before you that recommends approval of the ordinance, and you need to be clear on your action in regards to the resolution. This is David Smoke. I just I would concur with what Mark just said. If the planning commission has a, a clear motion that you would prefer to vote on that is in a negative, then that is okay. Um, you just need to make sure that's very clear on the front end that that's what you're doing. So you wouldn't want to have a motion that's in the affirmative and then everyone voted down. Usually when you have an affirmative safe motion in second, you are assuming that those two people that make that motion are for the for the resolution, for the whatever it is you're voting on. So if that's not the case, then you would want to make a motion in the negative and just vote that however the commission feels feels fit. This is Commissioner Green. Uh, Vice Mayor Poblin, did you include that the request is not in compliance with the future land use map? Was no. that in there? No. Shouldn't we include that as well? No. No, it's not a rezoning request is not complete because he's not, they've well, that's, not filed a traffic impact that, study. But well, we that's true, have, but we, isn't it? But that's we true, but aren't be, we also? No, we shouldn't be discussing any of the other merits because we have an incomplete application before us. So none of the, uh, to me, you don't uh, have any kind of judgment on any of the other merits until you have a complete application. So I think uh, we need a complete application before the, the planning commission can fully uh, uh, discuss this application. This is a requirement of the application. So I, I, I don't, we don't need to add anything else to this. Well, that's a motion on the floor and there was a second commissioner. Um, and, 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 uh, the motion. My I'm motion sorry. is move to deny the zoning map amendment request based on the failure to submit a traffic impact study as is required in section 22-147A1 of the driveways and other access ways ordinance as, fo as found in chapter 22, article 5 of the Farragut Municipal Code. Um, if, we, uh, if we start debating and move up to the planning, to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen and incomplete um, uh, um, application or, or zoning request, we are setting a very dangerous precedent that anyone can come in and they don't have to file a traffic impact study. They get a hearing on their their um, um, their their uh, request, and it moves up to the board of mayor and aldermen without having to do traffic in impact studies can be expensive, but they are a necessary part of what the board the planning commission needs to make a recommendation. And that could go for any element that's a requirement for an application. That's true. That's, that's very that's true. correct. <clears throat> okay, well, that's the motion, and I think Commissioner Dick seconded that. Um, I so I, I have a couple of letters to read uh, regarding this agenda hey, item hey, for Mark, citizens. Uh, hey, Mark, uh, let us speak. Uh, let us speak. The applicant. Uh, we, Louise Paul, and I know she wants multi-million dollar developments to come to Farragut. So we've got this senior uh, project tied in with the, the villages and also uh, widening Boring Road, paying for it. But we will agree to do the traffic study. We said that we could make this subject to the traffic study. We've already done one traffic study on this property and it passed without access to Boring Road. Of course, now we're saying we'll have access to Boring Road. But we'll, we'll defer to what uh, Vice Mayor of Louise Province, and I know she wants big developments to come to Farragut, multi-million dollar deals, and that's what we're proposing. So we'll we'll take it off the agenda and do the traffic study. We've already done one in the past uh, a couple of years ago, but we'll update the traffic study and do what Louise Province said. So just take it off the agenda, and then we'll put it back on the agenda when we get the traffic study. So that alleviate having to go through all the uh, multiple minutes of discussion at this time. So do we need another motion to table this item? I mean, my recommendation is that you take action on it as it's submitted. And yeah, 
but that's just that's my recommendation. We've talked about it at two workshop sessions, and we've discussed the traffic impact study. Um, and um, yeah, but you all can do what you know the planning commission can. If you want to do that, that's up to you all. Well, we have a motion actually, on the floor. We have a motion yeah, on the floor and a mm -hmm. second. You have to vote on it. I think what Rita's saying is we got a motion and a second. We're we're already required to vote on it. I do have a couple of letters if you want me to read those into the record on this item. Um, not a lot of stuff, but a couple of letters. Mark, um, please read those as we would normally. Yeah, okay. Uh, the first letter is from John Holtzrager. Um, he's at 345 Bernie Circle. Uh, members of MPC, we object to the proposed zoning map amendments. And this one's actually in items five and six. We further object to MPC discussing this request since the required traffic study was not completed. Since it is either too costly or too inconvenient for a developer to do what is required, I'll save Horn Properties the time and expense. Here's my study. Twice in the last two weeks, it's taken more than 10 minutes to drive the distance from Costco to Campbell Station on Kingston Pike. More routinely, Kingston Pike is a parking lot at various times of the day, even on weekends. Say what you will about proposed traffic lights and advanced computer-based control measures. Adding the volume associated with hundreds more apartments is going to make this situation worse. And we haven't even built all the apartments that have already been authorized. Lastly, I object to the continued waste of time that Horn Properties is causing with their six-plus year circus of multifamily project proposals how many more times will citizen comments opposing multifamily projects have to be read into the record how many more hours of mpc and boma time will be wasted on this town officials have done some fantastic work to bring desirable improvements to farragut how much more good could the town accomplish if they didn't have to waste their time on a continuous stream of uh, horn property proposals that only benefit landowners and developers Next uh, item is for actually agenda items five through nine. And this one is from Don Schreyer. He's at 301 Bernie Circle. Uh, the residents of Baldwin Park believe that a traffic study is required before any additional proofs of, it says approves of development. Traffic study is a look at the current traffic density. However, it should project the additional traffic that will come from the approved as well as new developments being proposed. Approved developments include Ivy Farms, 200 homes, villages at Ivy Farms, 78 homes, Brass Lantern Subdivision, 50 homes, Brookmere Subdivision, 140 homes, Watt Road Apartments, 200 units, Biddle Farms, 286 units, total approved, 668 being proposed, uh, 84 Town Center, 400 plus apartments and homes, Old Ingalls Apartments, 200 units, Loop Road Apartments, 75 units, Groves at Boyd Station, 200 to 300 homes, total approximately 1,000. Each unit above can have two, two vehicles, thus adding over 3,000 vehicles to the already overcrowded roads. A solution to this overcrowding of our town's roads needs to be addressed prior to approval of any additional housing unit being approved. That's all that were addressed under agenda item five specifically for this season, this evening. Okay, are we ready to move on to item number six now? No, we need to we vote. haven't taken action on, on the motion. Okay, so we, we have um, a motion I mean, on the The floor. motion on the floor from Vice Mayor Pavlin was to not support resolution PC-21-04 due to the failure of the requirement to submit a traffic impact study as is required in the section that she referenced from the municipal code. And the second was from Commissioner Dick. 
So I will uh, read oh. off the planning commissioner so in terms of that, unless someone wants to Sorry, read you. the motion. So read the motion again, because it's kind of confusing if it's. It's your uh, not supporting resolution PC-21-04. Approval. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're voting to not voting support. To approve. Yeah. Okay. Um, due to the lack of a traffic impact study and an incomplete, thus an incomplete application. That's the motion and second on the floor. Is it, I guess you all have any further discussion on that before I start reading the commissioner's actions on this. Okay, Commissioner Green. Aye. Commissioner Dick. Aye. Chairman Holliday. Aye. Commissioner Bellamy. Commissioner Bellamy, aye. Commissioner Myers. Aye. Vice Mayor Poblin. Aye. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, aye. Mr. St. Clair. Mr. St. Clair, aye. Mr. Russ. Commissioner Russ, aye. And the motion passes by a vote of 9 0. So we're ready to go on to the next item. Item number six, discussion and public hearing on a zoning map amendment request for the property referenced at 11500 Kingston Pike, west of the Farragut Town Hall, parcel 148, tax map 142, 68.31 acres to rezone the area currently zoned 01 office to C1 general commercial to rezone portions of the, to rezone portions of the Area currently zone B-1 buffer, R-1 rural single family residential, and R-2 general single family residential to R-4 attached single family residential, and R-6 OSMR open space multiple family residential to rezone a portion of the properly property currently zoned R-2 to B-1 buffer. Horn Properties Incorporated applicant. That's kind of a novel on the. the yeah. yeah, I get all the parts in there. Caption there on that one. Well, this this one we've talked about a couple of times as well, um, and the staffs noted that the request at this time reflected uh, in Ordinance Twenty One Show Seven is not consistent with the the uh, objectives and policies uh, of the comprehensive land use plan. Uh, in addition, this project does not have a traffic impact study uh, either. Uh, so it is considered from the staff's perspective to be incomplete. And for those reasons, the staff uh, does not support resolution 21 PC-21-05, which recommends approval of ordinance 21-07. I do have a couple of citizen uh, comments after you all motion and second on to get the discussion started. Okay, I'm gonna try this again. Um, I move to deny resolution PC-21-05 based on the failure to submit a traffic impact study as is re required in section 22-147A1 of the driveways and other access ways ordinance as found in chapter 22, article five of the Farragut Municipal Code. Okay, is there a second? Second. Commissioner Dick. Okay. All right. Uh, Chairman, do you want the applicant to talk or do you want me to read the citizen comments? I have a couple of uh, couple of citizen comments on this. Let's go with the citizen's comments first and then the applicant may be able to okay. answer comments from the those letters, if okay. need be. Uh, and both of these are basically grouped comments from two, the two affected subdivisions. Uh, 
rebutting this rezoning. First is from the Park Place Homeowners Association Board. Uh, we, the Park Place Homeowners Association Board, are submitting comments representing the 40 homeowners of Park Place to the revised proposal submitted by Horn Properties, Inc., seeking to rezone the adjacent Eddie Ford property that is currently on the April 15, 2021 Farragut Municipal Planning Commission agenda, which was discussed at the March 18, 2021 Farragut Municipal Planning Commission meeting that we also submitted comment in opposition. We remained opposed to the revised proposal to the same degree as the original proposal discussed at the January 28, 2020 one Farragut Municipal Planning Commission meeting, a meeting which generated 184 comments, all opposed. It is understood that the Ford property is part of the COUP vision as a mixed-use town center property that is currently zoned appropriately for that. <clears throat> At some point in time, the property will be developed, just not with this revised proposal with its requested zoning changes. Change the current zoning uh, will undermine the premise of what the COUP seeks to achieve, that of being a visionary document serving as the foundational backstop to guide and protect Farragut's decisions to ensure development proposals contribute, enhance the appearance of Farragut. Embedded within that is the requirement to harmonize and transition new development to and with surrounding neighborhoods, which is not what either of the Horn Properties Inc. proposals are about. The revised proposal discussed March 18, 2021 is about eliminating the 01 transition from C1 and putting a ring of R4 around R6, which is not about a harmonious transition with Park Place or Glen Abbey. There is much at stake here, specifically whether the CLUP can remain as the premise guiding the decisions on how the future growth of Farragut will evolve acquiesce here and risk setting the precedent that opens the door wide uh, open for challenges that will render the CLUP as a meaningless document. Farragut should not want to make that sacrifice. Sincerely, the Park Place Homeowners Association Board, Robert Crossley, President, 503 Colonial Ridge Lane, Christy Fondren, Vice President, 515 Colonial Ridge Lane, Mickey Jacobs, Secretary, 511, Colonial Ridge Lane, Tony Neely, Treasury, Treasurer, 300, Hard Place Boulevard, and Noel Poindexter, uh, Neighborhood Liaison, uh, 406, Park Place Boulevard. And then the other letter is on behalf of the Glen Abbey Homeowners Association, submitted by Don Mann, 518, MacArthur Lane. Dear Commissioners, I am respectfully submitting this letter on behalf of the Glen Abbey Homeowners Association Board of Directors and the 141 households of the Glen Abbey subdivision. We have followed this particular agenda item for a number of months now and submitted letters in the past expressing our concerns over this rezoning request, particularly as it relates to rezoning any portion of the Ford property to R6. Before I summarize our homeowners' concerns, I'm curious to know if Horn Properties has conducted a traffic impact study. My understanding is that there is an ordinance that requires a traffic impact study to be included with the application for rezoning. I don't recall hearing about the details of that study. Be that as it may, here is a summary of our homeowners' concerns. First, it was quite clear from listening to the nearly 200 public comments that were read during the January in March FMPC meetings that there were overwhelmingly object, objections to rezoning any portion of the Ford property to R6. Second, the consensus of all commissioners who spoke at both meetings was against the rezoning to R6 and specifically against any development of apartments on such a narrow strip of land. Now the latest Horn Properties plan is to shoehorn in R4 attached single family residential around the perimeter of the proposed R6 multifamily residential. Third, it was noted by many commissioners that apartments have never been part of the vision for development of this specific property. Fourth, representatives from Horn Properties downplayed during the 
March meeting the number of homes that would be affected by their proposal for the entire property. They stated that only the properties that but up to the Ford property would be affected. However, the truth of the matter is the lack of proper buffer zones, the lack of gradual transitions, the construction of office suites, retail stores and restaurants, the development of multi-story apartments surrounded by single-story condos plus parking lot lighting would all, just about all of the Glen Abbey would affect just about all of the Glen Abbey and Park Place homeowners. Fifth, it is clear that the guidelines from the CLUP are not being followed, which states to protect existing neighborhoods from incompatible new development to encourage gradual transitions even within new development. The following guidelines should be applied if a density <laughs> different from the adjacent property is proposed. The transition should occur within the proposed development, gradually increase or decrease away from the common boundary. Furthermore, on page 12 of the COUP, it reads gradual density increases are encouraged near mixed use office and commercial developments as long as they maintain quality standards to ensure compatibility with adjacent development. On the north end, we don't believe a 35 foot buffer plus the width of Jamestown Boulevard extension maintains the quality standards to ensure compatibility with the Glen Abbey subdivision. Sixth, uh, zone. R6 has no language within it to address transition from existing neighborhoods. R6 has a much higher density than the existing adjoining neighborhoods. On the south end, transitioning from Glen Abbey with only a 25 foot buffer and then R4 attached single family residential plus the width of Jamestown Boulevard extension and adding in a visible roundabout resulting with R6 multifamily residential apartments is not what we view as gradual or compatible. Seventh, the Ford property is long north to south and very narrow east to west, which makes the gradual housing transition to Glen Abbey R3 and Park Place R4 incompatible if any part of it is rezoned to R6. Finally, in our opinion, the town of Farragut has ample apartments within its borders, either existing or proposed. We believe that apartments have a detrimental effect on a community if locations are not wisely considered. The results can be reduction, property values and quality of life for existing neighborhoods, plus increased traffic and lighting pollution. These points should be considered. Thank you for your consideration uh, of and the potential effect on the two established neighborhoods that border the Ford property, Don Mann, Glen Abbey Homeowner Association. And that's the only citizen comments submitted on this agenda item. So does anybody have any questions or comments for Mark? I think the applicant is, is here to comment if they have any comments. Now that we've read the citizen comments. Uh, yes, Mark, are, are you saying then you're voting on Louise's proposal to deny the proposal already? Yeah, that's the motion. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm kind of shocked and bewildered about the tactic that planning commission's using and Ms. Palm and, and Betty Dick too, because we didn't even have a chance to discuss the merits of the senior facility uh, and widening Boring Road does pay for it. I, I would have thought the town of Farragut would want to hear that. And on uh, Eddie Ford's property, you know, we 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 put high-end condominium lots all around the multifamily uh, proposal, and we have the medical office retail in the front. We have our uh, four uh, units in the back. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of surprised uh, the way that we were treated on both these proposals. So I guess that's the, the, the reason these, the reason we are in this discussion is the fact that you have not submitted all the information that's required and the information we need to make our decisions. Yeah. And yeah, yeah but, but Ms. Vice Chair uh, or Chairman, yeah, we should have. Then you should have said we have to submit the traffic study. We had told Mark Shipley earlier 
we if you would vote on this up or down subject to the traffic study we've already done one traffic study on Boring road but what i think you should have said was you guys got to present a traffic study and before we will vote but then that you decided otherwise to vote before we even had a chance to submit the traffic study that you're demanding i, I think i think the town is uh shockingly uh adverse to multi-million dollar projects that you should want in the town so uh, you can see your ass vote is that is that i think you're being disingenuous there but what we're doing is not what we would treat any applicant if they submitted an incomplete submittal you you request it to be on the agenda for a vote i mean it could, but the key is have a complete submittal and then we will entertain on the merits of the uh, of the application based on the, the zoning changes to your request period yeah we we talked about the traffic impact study last time and it was in the staff's report that was sent out to everyone including the applicant uh, that we had to have a traffic impact study for the planning commission to have the information they need to make an informed well, fine. We, uh, we, can recommendation. Do, we can do a traffic study, but you should not turn the proposal down on both of these before we do the traffic study. We should, we, Mr. Horn, we should not be considering an incomplete application, period. We, if that sets a bad precedent, what else are we not going to, are we going to put a subject to? Subject twos are usually something that's not on the checklist relative to what we need to have and make a complete application. Okay, well, that's let me a total, ask, let me that's ask a total another, issue is the subject to. Let me ask you another question. If we resubmit these proposals, can we resubmit them immediately? Or do we have to wait a number of months before we can resubmit? You can, re, you can resubmit when you have your traffic study completed. Okay, so we do the traffic study. It's a study. part of your application. If we do the traffic study, then we can resubmit immediately. Is that what you're saying? That's, that's good. That's what we'll do. We'll just do a traffic study on the projects that resubmit. Yeah, I'll probably, this is Mark, I'll have to probably talk with uh, uh, town council a little bit, or the town attorney a little bit about procedurally on that. So, um, because we are voting on the resolution, we voted on the previous one as presented, um, and that's what. I think the motion and second is at this time uh, in terms of readdressing that I'll I need to be clear on that uh, and I'll have to have a conversation with the town attorney oh, on that. Please get back with us on that because we will just do the study and resubmit. Otherwise, you know, like I said, I'm shocked, bewildered by the town's uh, treatment of us on these two proposals. <coughs> This is Commissioner Myers. I'd like to make sure that that we're treating Mr. Horn and his applications consistently and fairly the same way that we treat we we treated uh, Bud Cullum's application on the Biddle Farm regarding the traffic study. So make sure we're we're following the same uh, rules and guidelines that we have in the past. Yeah, we are. In fact, uh, the they provided the traffic impact study, and we had. A third party evaluate it so i mean we went even a step beyond that so it it we're definitely and that's very important to me to be in the town to be consistent and that's what we're trying to be and he provided that in association with the rezoning request so we're we're just trying to be consistent here uh we've talked about this traffic impact study for months really um on both these projects so it's we need the information the planning commission does to to have all you know the guidance that they need to make an informed recommendation to to the board of mayor and alderman i mark i wholeheartedly agree with you we need the traffic study i just want to make sure we've treated previous applicants um in the exact same chronological order as we're treating this applicant yeah they were they provided that prior to taking action on the with the planning commission taking action on the rezoning recommendation yes oh, thank you sir
Hey, Mark, what, what, and the commission, what you guys should have said, in my opinion, is do the traffic study. Our guy in here, John Wright, uh, our staff guy, thought that we had to do it prior to the Board of Mayor and Alderman vote. We may have misunderstood that. But what you should have said is you guys do the traffic study, then we'll consider the proposal rather than summarily dismiss it as if you don't even want to consider the multi million dollars of projects we're trying to bring to Farragut. That's why I say we're shocked and bewildered. I don't know of any town in America that would act that way. So anyway, if you check with your town council, uh, we'll check with ours and we'll just do the study and resubmit. But we don't want to wait a year or six months. That's not fair. If you want to treat us like a, a regular citizen of the town. Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely look into it as soon as as soon as I can, for sure. No question about it. Thank you. Yep. There is a motion and second on the floor with uh, Vice Mayor Pavlin recommending to not support resolution PC-21-05 due to the application being incomplete. And a second was from Commissioner Dick. And I, unless anybody has any further comments, I'll read the roll call on that. Commissioner Green? Aye. Commissioner Dick? Aye. Chairman Holliday? Aye. Commissioner Bellamy? Mr. Bellamy, aye. Mr. Myers? Mr. Myers, aye. Uh, Vice Mayor Pavlin? Vice Mayor Pavlin, aye. Mayor Williams? Mayor Williams, aye. Commissioner St. Clair? Commissioner St. Clair, aye. Commissioner Russ. Commissioner Russ, aye. Motion passes uh, 9 0. <clears throat> Ready to move on to item number seven discussion and public hearing on a request to amend the Farragut Municipal Code, Appendix A, Zoning, Chapter 4, Section 13, Site Plan Regulation. Paragraph C or 6 R to address the screening requirements for below grade refuge collection and recycling systems. Ben Benanova LLC applicant. Okay, yeah, we talked about this as a workshop item last month and um, initially the applicant had requested to allow landscaping to be used as an option to screen these uh, partially below grade um, trash containers um, and staff nor planning commission was really receptive to that because of the concern of uh, maintaining the landscaping uh, in the long term and ended up with not really having a proper screen uh, for these kind of structures. Uh, so um, we discussed this a fair amount and the, the guidance that was provided by the planning commission is that we would screen these at a minimum on three sides with the same kind of material requirements that we would have for any other dumpsters. Um, but then due to some uh, concerns that were expressed uh, on gates and doors with uh, more traditional uh, container systems that we as uh, as an option for this type of uh, facility that they would not be required to screen the front. Uh, the staff in the ordinance 21-08 has uh, reflected that guidance and then we added a condition that basically if you don't screen the front, the, the dumpster needs to face internally, not like out toward a, a public street or in a very visible location. I think that's consistent with the architectural design standards. and. This uh, helps this kind of uh, uh, approach. Uh, they don't have to screen as much uh, of the uh, dumpster because it's usually a shorter dumpster than traditional ones. And then if it's internally fa facing that the front wouldn't have to be screened. So it potentially looks something like that. Um, and the applicant provided those images of what what that might look like based on the language that's provided for in ordinance 21-08. Basically in looking at this a little further, the actual section that needed to be changed was the accessory structure section 
section one and chapter four of the zoning ordinance. And then the site plan section, uh, we are proposing to change that to remove the screening requirements because it's not necessary to add the regulations to that section because they're already addressed in another section. It's, it's redundant and it's an opportunity for not um, uh, ensuring that if you had a change to that uh, aspect of the ordinance that that secondary section may not get changed and it could be confusing because you might have different regulatory uh, requirements there. So with that recommendation, uh, we do uh, recommend approval of resolution PC-21-06, which recommends approval of ordinance 21-08. And I think the applicant is here if they have any questions, if anybody has a motion and second on that. Mayor Williams, motion to approve. Okay. Second. Yes, second by Vice Mayor Pavlin. Okay. I'll go ahead and second it, but I wasn't the one that seconded it. Oh, you weren't? Who was that? No one. Yeah. Commissioner Dick. Chairman no of Oh, okay. All day. Okay. Sorry. All right. I do have a question, Mark. Um, uh, th this picture uh, we're seeing, yeah. it looks more like a residential area. Um, is that the case or are they in residential? No, this areas? is for non, well, I mean, it could be an apartment, multifamily, of course, but you wouldn't have that kind of dumpster. Uh, in a even a clubhouse wouldn't have something that large. Uh, okay. It's just an enormous... okay. That, that answers my question. But if they did, they'd have to screen it for our requirements in Chapter Four. So it it doesn't matter whether it's residential or non-residential. But it's just that most residential is not of the scale to where that would apply. That's what I was wondering. If you know, you have one per street in a a neighborhood, or or what the situation with that would be. Yeah, they did a nice job with the images. That's a that's a good looking development there. <laughs> anybody anybody have any questions? Questions? <laughs> In that case, let's the applicant. Does he have any questions or comments? Uh, no, I don't. I appreciate everyone giving it uh, due consideration. Thank you. Are we ready for a vote? I guess so. Um, let's see here. Yep. All right, uh, Commissioner Green. Commissioner Green, aye. Commissioner Dick. Aye. Uh, Commissioner uh, Chairman Holiday. Chairman Holiday, aye. Commissioner Bellamy. Commissioner Bellamy, aye. Mr. Myers. <clears throat> Mr. Myers, aye. Vice Mayor Pavlin. Vice Mayor Pavlin, aye. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, aye. Mr. St. Clair. Mr. St. Clair, aye. Mr. Russ. Commissioner Russ, aye. And the motion passes by a vote of nine to zero. Thank you for being with us tonight. Moving on to item number eight, discussion and public hearing on a concept plan for the Grove at Boyd Station subdivision, parcel 50, 50.01, 9.01, and 54.01, tax math 162, 112, 611 Boyd Station Road, 132 acres, 285 lots, zone R-1, OSMR, Rackley Engineering Applicant. Okay, we've we've looked at this property and really kind of the, generally the same concept plan that was presented when the property was recently rezoned uh, from R2 to OSMR. Um, the uh, applicant provided a concept plan, even though it's not currently required to try to um, allay some of the concerns that planning commissioners and board of mayor and alderman members had about the distribution of attached versus detached in the development. Uh, there's uh, 90 attached units in this concept plan and out of 285 lots, the rezoning condition allowed up to 100 
attached units. Um, this property has uh, 46.9 acres of open space, which includes three stormwater detention basins along Boyd Station Road. It has about 3,000 feet of frontage on Boyd Station Road, and uh, town administrator mentioned that that's a, the, uh, the developer in the town are working together on improvements to that to that section of Boyd Station Road. This is kind of the western portion of the project. You can see the stormwater basins. There is an access proposed to uh, the roundabout at McPhee and then down at Boyd Station Road. And um, let's look here. There's a walking trail connection that goes out to Virtue Road, <clears throat> uh, which the property does access, but it's not a good location for a vehicular access there. Um, the property does currently, the concept plan shows a walking trail that stubs out to the north to the cottages at Price Farms and a McPhee Road and ties into a 10 foot wide trail that would be constructed along parallel with Boyd Station Road. Um, the uh, staff's comments that were emailed out earlier today, um, this is a big piece of property and a complex development really uh, a lot of stuff going on uh, so we just want to be clear that um, you know obviously this is a concept plan with conceptual level of uh, information at this point so the staff really in our comments are really focusing on the macro uh, considerations that a concept plan is intended to address so that the applicant knows you know, if they're generally on the right track before they start doing the more detailed preliminary plat work, which they'll probably do that in phases because they can't disturb more than 50 acres at a time um, through TDOT, TDEX regulations. So the comments that we had, there were 13 remaining comments, and then there's, gonna, there's some discussion items that we thought needed to be brought up with the Planning Commission, and y'all may have other comments, and I do have one citizen comment on this project um, so <clears throat> I don't know if you want me to go through each of the staff comments or uh, before you all make a motion and second uh, or I can just kind of show you a little bit the a question that we had just is the n lot numbers and they're really high numbers and I don't really know why um, the street names, uh, normally a concept plan doesn't include the street names, but it's it's okay to include them, and I'm sure they've probably run those through uh, Knox County uh, addressing, uh, but that's a comment. There is a walking trail, and frankly, I missed this uh, on my review, and so did uh, the applicants and uh, other reviewers. There's a walking trail, actually, that was built with Chantilly Acres, the little subdivision off McPhee Road that comes in from McPhee that stubs into this property uh, kind of in that general area. So they need to tie into that somehow and get a trail connected into the development from that. In addition to the, the cottages has two trail stubs that uh, stub into this property. And a comment that I had on that was, um, it looks like they're just tying into one of them. It, I don't know if there's a way to to work a section around a tie into both ends, uh, since they're just basically coming into one location. Um, <clears throat> the uh, I think it would be helpful to have an even with the understanding it's conceptual, uh, but where they where they have the different cross sections of the streets and the subdivisions to include one for Boyd Station. Uh, the anticipated improvement there is a four foot widening of the road. Uh, and a 10 foot walking trail with at least a six foot grass strip, probably more in places. Um, near station eight plus five uh, in this area here, this appears to be uh, potentially a sinkhole. So again, similar to what we talked about at the Meadows and McPhee, um, you know, they need to, you know, if that is in fact a sinkhole, the street needs to be shifted as far away from that as possible, and perhaps the sidewalk 
dropped in on the other side of the road. I'm not sure, but uh, that's that's a comment. Um, this trail stub here from Boyd Station into the development, um, it kind of terminates you without connecting to anything really. It just into the street. It might be better to try to terminate that uh, where a, a sidewalk is nearby with a crosswalk. Um, and perhaps uh, what they tie in with Chantilly Acres walking trail stub could dovetail in with with you know a connection somewhere in that southwest part of the the property. Um, <clears throat> the setback summary just needs to be clear that uh, the buildings themselves have to be 20 feet apart for the side setback. Um, I had a question about um, a fork lane. It's a cul-de-sac and this is a it got a lot of good design features with this uh, layout because it has a lot of loop streets and it only has a couple of cul-de-sacs one of them a question i had since it's so close to the walking trail on boyd station road if there was a way to connect a trail to the end of that cul-de-sac uh, that cul-de-sac doesn't have a sidewalk which is fine from a staff's perspective because it's a low traffic generator but it does have attached units um, and it might be beneficial to have a walking trail stub, uh, you know, that goes into the end of that. Uh, and uh, let's see. Note about the signage. Uh, they are proposing, and even though this is way beyond the level of the concept plan, potentially a entrance sign that would be in the public right of way off of uh, Boyd Station. And that is allowed now in the new sign ordinance, but they do have to go through uh, the Planning Commission and the Board of Mayor and Alderman uh, before the sign goes to the VRB. Uh, street trees, um, that's something that we require now with our streetscaping. Um, it's a good addition to our requirement set, but it's something that we actually, uh, I'm working on developing a palette of street trees. Uh, they're, most of them are going to be cultivars of um, native trees uh, that are not as wide um, so that, you know, Public Works or whoever ends up maintaining these trees um, doesn't have to come in and, you know, cut one side of them back because they're overhanging into the streets. So some things like that, just coordinating that with the staff. And then finally, um, there's a, some, de some depressions down here in the southwest part of the property. Again, I'm not sure if those are sinkholes or not, but they are showing a potential detention basin down there. Um, and we just want to be real careful with that because we don't want, you know, a fallout to occur uh, on Boyd Station Road or something, you know, that relates to water, more water draining into a car system that could cause the uh, the rock to dissolve quicker and create some structural issues with public uh, infrastructure. So that's uh, the staff's comments on this and then we can talk through the discussion items. I guess if you want, Chairman, do you want me to go ahead and bring out the discussion items or just wait on those or? Go ahead. Do you have a preference? Uh, go ahead. Um, okay, yeah, from and the, the letter citizen comment relates to a couple of these, but um, to, from a staff's perspective, there's a couple of things that just, again, these are just discussion items. This, this road here, uh, which is Iron Plow Drive, is really long, which is not a problem. Um, and it has some roundabouts, which I think is a good design element. It gives us this uh, street system, a lot of visual interest and slows traffic down, which is, I applaud this design for that. Um, it, uh, it is a long street and a question is whether a sidewalk should be on both sides of the road. Um, the planning commission uh, on a street like this, um, you know, you can require it on both sides of the street if you feel that it, uh, it has a potential to have a lot of conflicts with pedestrian and vehicles, a lot of traffic flow. Um, 
but you know you also have to consider that that's additional public infrastructure that the town ultimately is going to have to maintain if you're requiring something that uh, is above and beyond but we thought it was a was a at least a discussion item um, a second discussion item <clears throat> which we've uh, talked about at the staff developer meeting was uh, and related to the Meadows and McPhee was designed speeds. Um, the subdivision regulations requires a minimum 35 foot, 35 mile per hour vertical design speed, but they allow a 30 mile per hour vertical design speed for what's called loop streets, but there's no uh, length mentioned in the subdivision regulation for what a loop street is. Um, so, you know, the town engineer believes that the, given the length of these streets, uh, like Wagon Hitch Road and Branch Hook Road, that they really wouldn't be considered a loop street. Um, loop streets are, you know, are really intended to be shorter streets, um, and therefore that's why they can be designed uh, with the slower uh, design speed. Um, so that's something that uh, that should be discussed because both those streets, uh, one's 1,800 feet and the other's 2,200 feet. So they're pretty, pretty long streets. Um, and then the third item is just, again, as your role thinking about the future um, and kind of a follow-up on some of the discussion we have with Grigsby Chapel Road, uh, the question is to whether the staff originally asked the, the the designer to stub a road to the north somewhere. Uh, didn't really matter exactly where. Uh, ideally, it'd be somewhere on a common property line so that when a property, uh, one of these larger tracks to the north, if it's ever resubdivided, that that road could be extended in into that property, potentially down to Evans Road. And again, that's you know something that's talked about in our land use plan, increased connectivity, trying to provide for uh, an overall traffic flow uh, that is uh, more efficient because you give people more choices and you're distributing traffic over a greater network of streets. And as we see seen with this property, what might be a farm right now or has been for many years you know, may not always be that. So I think it's the role of the Planning Commission to think about the future, think about your plan, and whether a street should be stubbed somewhere to the north. Again, it doesn't really matter to the staff, per se, where that occurs. Um, I think the topography would certainly be a consideration, and it, there is some steep property up there. Uh, but that's uh, that's another discussion item that I think uh, need, there needs to be some guidance provided by the planning commission, at least from the staff's perspective. Um, so that's the three on those. Um, Chairman, do you want me to read the one letter that I have, uh, or do you want to make a motion and second on to get a? Uh, go ahead and read the letter, and then we'll make the motion. Okay. This uh, let's see. This letter is. From Steve Williams at 721 Virtue Road. Thank you for reading these comments into the meeting, including them in the concept plan discussion. Um, one design change to increase open space buffer. These are recommendations that this applicant's making to the concept plan layout. Uh, let me, and I, that was also sent to you all if you had a chance to look at that. Farragut has always encouraged green spaces, especially between differing zoning areas. Our adjoining farm is zoned agricultural and has been a residence for the last 30 years. We have offered to buy the portion of land behind our home from both the developer and current owner located in top northeast corner of the proposed community for this portion of land to be used as green space. Our goal is no more than an open space buffer even with our many discussions with the developer and or the current property owner, the proposed concept plan provides only a small open space buffer in this area. 
Since we have not been involved in any design meetings with the developer, we can only assume the small buffer open space is due to the depression sinkhole east of the proposed wagon hitch road. Without the depression sinkhole limitation shifting the plan, lots west some 80 feet would work with no loss to developer. With the variance, the plan can be shifted to the same 80 feet west, providing a usable, reasonable buffer. Green space on the northeast corner and more interesting community design. For the last 30 plus years, we have lived and raised our family in Farragut. When doable, the Planning Commission has chosen buffers and open spaces between existing and new communities as the town has grown. Please review the attached sketch, and this was sent to you all, showing two cul-de-sacs versus a loop road. This allows for a reasonable buffer, open space on the northeast corner, and more interesting community design and no loss to the developer. Positive enhancements to the community and developer include uh, increased green space on the northeast corner to match the buffers provided on the south, southwest, and inside the development. Current design has the bulk of the open space buffer inside the community and not on the peripheral to soften the density and impact on the neighbors. Increased design of variance in the geometry of the community. This revision breaks up the cookie cutter lot and design of long straight streets. Farragut has grown in an interesting design with varied communities with curved winding streets. Lot count for this area, wagon, which, wagon Hitch Road is the same at 46, plus or minus 75 wide lots, 75 foot wide lots on two cul-de-sacs. Same as with one long street. <clears throat> Walking trail would be moved to the clubhouse amenity side of Iron Plow Drive, providing better contact for residents to amenities without crossing the main street. The developer has the same number of lots and pays for less paving, and then the town saves on future street maintenance. Based on any measurement, the length of roadway to pave, ladder, maintain, and later maintained by the town decreases from 2242 to 2000, a savings of 242 linear feet times 26 foot wide uh, of road paving. Not only is this green, it reduces the cost for the developer in the town later. Shorter road meets the 500 foot cul-de-sac requirement and a FPC variance can be granted to allow for the longer street caused by a geological depression. Sinkhole shown on the northeast section that blocks lots to the west without this variance. We request this design to change to increase the open space <clears throat> buffer in the northeast corner with a P FPC variance for the road changes as shown on the attached PDF. Please note approximate measurements of the proposed open space buffer in the northeast corner. Second comment was to remove the sidewalk and road stub to our property. We request the sidewalk shown running to our farm soon on the plan be removed and the staff recommendation of a road stub to our property be voted down. Our property is a farm undeveloped and not suitable for a three road or walking trail for these reasons. Slopes in this area on our side are 16% in the first 100, 200 feet. Too steep for roads or walking trails. The road or walking trail would cross a wet weather conveyance going toward Evans Road, not environmentally friendly. The road designed to connect would be straight, would be a straight road from this point to Evans Road, creating another unsafe racetrack for speeders. This would split our farm into halves, dividing our farm 30 years. There are already walking trails on Evans and a connection to Virtue drawn into this concept plan, taking residents to the same final location, Turkey Creek and Virtue at the lake. With the current proposed walking trail to Virtue already included in this concept plan, the connection to Turkey Creek Road, Concord and Kingston Pike at Sugarwood is accomplished when Virtue Road is completed. There is no need to cut through our farm to accomplish the same goal. We request removal of sidewalk walking trail to our property and any removal of any design or requirement for a future road step to our property. And then third and final traffic speeding on Virtue speeding and 
traffic has increased drastically on Virtue. Sometimes we wait for three to five minutes to pull out of our driveway on the Virtue. Speeding is ongoing every day. Please submit the following questions and recommendations. What is the increased traffic count going to, toward Virtue Turkey Creek Roads? What is the plan to encourage exits on Boyd Station to use the improved McPhee? Why is a roundabout like the one installed as part of the development of Brookmere not included? This is a great traffic calming device and increases the safety for all. A roundabout on Boyd Station increases a slower traffic flow. Roundabout will increase the entry exit of traffic into the new community. We request a roundabout be installed at the Boyd Station entrance for traffic calming, safety, and to continue the town design theme on Virtue and McPhee. And that's the only comment I had uh, on this agenda item. Are we ready to make a motion? Yeah, I think so. Anyone have a motion here? Mr. Commissioner Myers, I, I, I'd really like to see a connection to the north that could ultimately tie into Evans Road. I think that's consistent with what we've done with other subdivisions in the past. And um, I think it also is consistent with the land use plan. Yeah, we did, we did that with the Meadows on McPhee, if you remember. They stubbed it to the north and south as part of that development. From the applicants, from the letter, um, I didn't understand exactly. Does the uh, letter writer think that the um, walking trails and all are going through his property when this is developed? No, I think they they just, it seems to me, they just don't want it, the trail to stub to their property yeah. or the road. Um, yeah, they know it's not going to be installed there at this time. That's, and it may never, I mean, it may not be extended for decades. Who knows? Uh, but that, again, that's what I, I was thinking. From my perspective that. is the Planning Commission is, it needs to me, think about the future, think about trying to not have Grigsby Chapel Road situations by, you know, thinking about your connectivity and your plan. Uh, now, you know, I don't know topographically it is a challenge, uh, so that he makes a valid point there. You can look at the contour lines and see that the topography is, is pretty steep up there. Um, but again, I think it's in thinking about what could happen in the future from the staff's perspective, it makes sense to have a connection somewhere to the north where, where that would be the most topographically appropriate. Uh, Mayor Williams, I don't think that location is a good location. Topographically, it's that is a challenge. Uh, maybe if we move west, it, the best I can see, it does get a little better. Do we have Do we have a motion here first before we get into discussion? I'd like to see uh, some uh, uh, planted buffer. Uh, uh, next to those houses there in that cul-de-sac when you first come in that that would be something i'd like like to put in there that it needs to be part of this right here uh sure. kind of like what we did with uh with ivy farm is, Chairman is that a button? i'm gonna have, i'm gonna go ahead and make a motion with the subject twos just to get this officially on the table for yeah. discussion okay is there a second on that I did not hear the motion. I move to approve with the subject, the current subject twos. Mayor Williams, second. Well, Mayor, that that doesn't pick up your buffer, your planted buffer that you wanted. Uh, sounds like on sweat leaf. That I mean that that particular motion. If you're only including those thirteen subject twos, you're not getting that in there. 
Yeah, well, I think we're going to have to make an, I'll make an amended motion. No, I think we might have a, a collection of stuff we might want to add or take no out. Problem. So uh, I'm happy to make an amended motion when we have um, more information. So okay. there's more discussion. So that... this is uh, Commissioner Myers. I'll second the motion. Well, we got uh, Mayor Williams has seconded it, so okay. we're, we're good. Yep. Okay. I have a question, Mark. Uh huh. What is this? I I can't see on my um, screen here, but it's kind of a triangle-looking street um, on the left side of the page, and there's. Um, something in the middle of that triangle section uh what does that indicate anything is that about that area that area yes that's a clubhouse and pool okay amenity center yep parking lot around it mm -hmm. and this is the the attached sections as you can see there's just two areas where they have that and it's down here near the the um, lcub um, substation is in this area and then they got it down here along Boyd Station Road. So, um, but this is a clubhouse amenity area. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Here we again, it has to do with the, with the buffer. I, I, I feel that they'll probably put a planted buffer. Yeah, right in here. Yeah. Well, what we did with um, the Ivy Farms um, was, unless you had, uh, if you had house lots abutting house lots that the Planning Commission required a planted buffer in those areas, um, if you had a lot of physical space or an existing uh, fence row, which a lot of this property has, um, then uh, you wouldn't have to add additional plant material. So you, they may want to add plant material, especially down, and I think they show it um, down here near the substation uh, and other areas. But um, as far yeah, that's as what, what I was talking about, Mark. Yeah. They'll probably want to plant that for their own residence. Yeah, but yeah. You go up to where that cul-de-sac is. Yeah, right, right there, in here where that that's row narrowed. right there yeah. of houses. Um, yep. That, I remember that being some of the best blueberry bushes in town uh, oh. at one time, right through there. But uh, yeah. Anyway, you're you're you do have residents against residents there, and I do think that needs to be a planted buffer. Yeah, I think the landscape plan needs to segment out the areas where um, there would be a required buffer, because uh, obviously down in this area uh, there'll be landscaping around the detention basins uh, or up in here. You know, just because of the physical space between. Um, you know, proposed lots and other, you know, house lots that are far away. It may not make sense to require a buffer, but that's up to you all. The OSMR allows the Planning Commission basically to require or not require a buffer or apply it as they see fit based on the, the proposed development and its context. So. You know, I think all these areas, at least from my recommendation, would be if, you know, in these 25 foot sections or where there's existing budding uh, residential structures that they would need to plant a, a buffer, like through this section or up here on this section where it's narrow, um, you know, and that may be a benefit for the residents in this development actually because. These larger tracks, um, you know, something could happen in there that that um, this developer may want to have that screening in place just to uh, help, you know, their residents rather than screening um, to to help an adjacent property at this time. One discussion: We're only going to deal with the motion having to do with the thirteen subject two, correct? Yeah, we could. You'd have to make an amended motion, that, but uh, as Vice Mayor Poblin said, there might be other things. That, so we Understand. can kind of make a Just note of that buffer. <laughs> yeah. Sure we're clear. 
this is Commissioner Green. I mean, this is the we're voting on a concept plan here, right? And we're really yeah. We we understand that there are um, details that need to be filled in as this progresses. So I I kind of yeah. assume that we're that we're kind of agreeing on the what the general layout, the lot distribution, the distribution of the structures. I think we've got some um, some of the structures shown there. So I think we mm -hmm. all understand, at least I understand that there may be more details to be worked out before we ever get a final final approval. Is that right? Yeah, I think it's useful to have uh, a general idea of where you all would like to see the buffer on the concept because that that helps with the uh, preparation of uh, the more detailed preliminary plat, um, which would be done, of course, in phases um, so that they'll have guidance to you know that they'll be looking at certain areas where they're going to have to uh, address that with the landscape plan. I think we need to address the vehicular connections at this yeah. point. Yes. I don't want to yeah. be, I, I, agree. Be, I don't want to mislead the applicant based upon a concept plan and try to deal with yep. it at the preliminary plat. I think we need to deal with it tonight. I agree. And can I can I speak to that? Jeremy. Hello. Oh, yes, go ahead. Oh, yes, introduce yourself. Give us an address. Right. This is Russ Rackley, Rackley Engineering, PO Box 30456, Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, I, I, let, let's talk about <clears throat> uh, Commissioner Myers, the connectivity to the north. The, what you see on the screen right now to the north, tracks four and five are the last two of four plus five acre tracks at the back of a private drive. And in front of the two lots in front of those have multi-million dollar houses on them. That property is never gonna be subdivided. It, it can't be the, the, the million, the owners of the million dollar homes would have to agree to make it a public road and subdivide higher density behind them. The only other choice uh, would be to stub out into Mr. Williams property, which you've already heard his letter. He, he, he doesn't want any of this and he, he doesn't even want a greenway trail stubbed out, much less a road. So uh, as you know, from our, our prior projects, we, we stub roads out where we think there's an opportunity to develop in the future because we would like to be the ones developing it. But in this particular situation, um, the, there's the, the properties surrounding this um, don't really don't don't have very high probability at all. Of, of development even in, in two decades or three decades. So um, I, I just don't want to build a road to nowhere just to build. And it's not about the cost of the road. It's it's the grading, it's the storm water. And what do you do with the storm water? And it's the cutting the trees to, to put it in uh, through the buffer, which the, the north boundary line is 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 will be remained. It's 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 predominantly the only specimen trees on the whole property is along that that north boundary line. It's the oldest fence line that that uh, has been allowed to grow up over the last uh, seventy or eighty years. Um, so I, I, I'm I'm not opposed to stubbing roads out, but but I I just don't see the value in stubbing roads out where they're unlikely, um, highly unlikely ever to be used. The, the Williams property has frontage, lots of frontage on Evans and uh, on Virtue. Uh, if, if in a couple of generations it was to develop, it would have plenty of opportunities to create loops between two roads. So that, that's why I, I'm not showing a connection uh, because I just don't think that it's viable. Russ, I, I agree with you with the with with what we know as the Forester property, which has been subdivided. I think the Williams property and the size of it, it's naive of us to think that that's not going to be developed someday. And it may be, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 years whenever the, the Williams decide to that it's appropriate to do that or pass it on to further generations. But I think with the size of that farm, I think it is consistent with what we've required in the past. Yes. There are some tight contours there, but there are there's some tight contours on your uh, on your concept plan that are about the same as as uh, is what would be required at some point in the future with the Williams Farm. So I, I really do think a a connection sim in a location that is probably pretty close to where the walking trail is proposed to the Williams Farm, a vehicular connection should be there to be able to ultimately tie into that neighborhood that is developed and. Um, and be able to connect to Evans and Virtue Road. 
how do we handle the stormwater problem of the, the stormwater running downhill onto um, undeveloped property? Uh, I would essentially have to cut the road short, take out some trees on the fence row and build a build a, uh, a basically a sump hole there to catch it. Otherwise, I'm violating state law and discharging. Well, well you're uh, up at, water. I mean, if, if I'm reading the contours right, you're kind of up at the crest of the hill. I, I can see the 920 and the 910 and the 900. So That's I just right. don't see how you're you would really be dumping any stormwater over on i mean there is some 920s over on you but well I mean, the, I, the road itself is going to go downhill towards his property well i mean at a very minimum maybe dedicating some right of way and stopping at the crest of the hill obviously you don't want to take your water and dump over on it but quite frankly your pre-development discharge is going that direction i mean from the crest of the hill from the 920 down i mean you're your pre-development water today that that lands on that that farm is actually going on the Williams property right now. Right, right. Yeah, no, you're right. There's a portion of it that is, and I have to balance that with what uh, my increases to not increase discharge on him. So, if 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 y'all want us to, I mean, it, it'll it'll cost a lot, uh, a, a literal uh, house lot, <laughs> to put a road in through there that uh, may will most likely never be used in. Uh, any are or our children's lifetimes, but if if that's what the planning commission desires, then then I guess that's what we'll do. Man, I just think it's naive to think that a, a fifty acre farm is not going to get uh, redeveloped at some point. Well, but it has it has uh, thousands of feet of frontage on two separate roads of its own, so it it has plenty of opportunity to get redeveloped and have multiple accesses, just not cross the ridge over, and 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 avoid the situations like Kingsgate, where you have basically a major collector running through a subdivision on roads that were built as local streets because it becomes a, a massive cut through. I mean, I think what we're trying to do is we're, we're trying to abide by the the philosophies that that we. Uh, incorporated and have adopted in the land use plan and that is connectivity both vehicular and pedestrian no i, I understand that i understand that I, I just don't uh i'm i if it made sense i would have a road stubbed out there i guess is my point just like i did uh, over on mcphee um with without even being asked um, <laughs> stubbed roads out in uh, both directions because those surrounding properties are most likely will be developed you know, in the, in the next uh, generation or so, but I, I just, uh, and, and you heard Mr. Williams letter, he doesn't, you know, he, he doesn't want us to develop any of the best property, which is that corner up there. That's the highest ground with the best views. But uh, um, if, again, if it's, if it's the, uh, the will of the planning commission, then, then we'll stub a road out there, but I just don't, uh, I, I'm not for, you know, roads to nowhere that are, most likely never going to be developed it it may in one day but it, it it ties back to the price farm greenway trails you've got two stub outs into our property about 130 feet apart and you're wanting me to, to connect to both of them and it just doesn't make sense it's creating a redundant loop that's 130 feet so i'll, I'll connect to one of them where it makes the most sense i'm, I'm opposed to building Yes, over there. I'm opposed to building 130 feet along a slope and cutting more trees out of the fence row to connect to a second stub that's so close together that it it doesn't make a lot of sense. So when we try to guesstimate future, and I know it's tough. I, 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 I know what you're trying to do, uh, Commissioner Myers, and, and I applaud that. Um, but it's just hard to have a crystal ball to know what, what and where makes the most sense. Um, without master planning everybody's property for them ahead of time. Um, and that's just not something that, that we can do. No, we can't master plan, but what we can do is is remain consistent with what we've required of other developers in the past to think about stubs. And we've got lots of walking trails and roads that stub to nowhere today, but, that, um, but we're planning for the future. We're planning for 20 and 30 and 50 years down the road to be able to abide by the connectivity philosophies that, that we've adopted. But a lot of that connectivity we've, we've required has been because of the fact that we only had a one way in and out in the subdivision. And here we have, a, you know, an entrance and exit on two major roads, you know, McPhee as well as Boyd Station. So I'm not, I'm not overwhelmingly 
convinced we need a stub to the north myself. Well, I mean, like what Mark Shipley said, what we're trying to do is we're trying to spread traffic out on multiple arterials and collectors. And um, and this gives you the opportunity in the future to be able to spread that traffic out. I mean, one of the issues that we have today and we dealt with tonight and we're still going to deal with it for a long period of time is Grisby Chapel because we've got a lot of subdivisions that spill out onto either one road or two roads. And the more that we can spread that traffic out, the, the less chance you get for traffic being condensed in one particular location. Does anybody, any uh, commissioners have any questions or comments about the staff's non-discussion related comments? Mark, I have some, this is Russ. I have some comments on those if, uh, okay. when I'm allowed to, to, to bring them up. That's up to the chairman. I think she's muted. Go, go with that. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to go down just, just to, to clarify. I'm going to just going to go through order real quick. Uh, yeah. the, the first comment about the lot numbering, basically, um, I've got three different sets of lot numbers because I've got three different lot types. So the, the, the lots that start in the 1000s from 1001 to 1000, whatever, are all uh, 86 foot wide. Uh, the 2000 lots are 76 foot wide and the 3000 lots are the attached multifamily. And that's just a way for me. Uh, and 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 my clients as we're going through different iterations of the concept to quickly be able to count how many a lots how many b lots and how many uh, attached lots that we have um, I, I don't think lot numbering really matters until we get to recording a final plat um, there's nothing that says we can't number them this way but but we could number them conceptually one to 285 to me it's a it's a minor issue. It's just a way to keep track yeah. as we lose a lot or gain a lot of, of how many of the three different lot classifications we have without having to how, without having to count them all and measure them every time. Um, I'd say if you're going to do that, just include a legend describing what why you're doing that. Okay. If that's the yep. way you're doing it. Yep. I at this can. point, I mean, final yep. plat needs to be more I got traditional. You. Yep. Uh, the street names have been approved by addressing. And obviously, okay. when, when we submit so. a plat, uh, to address team, they'll they'll certify that. Um, the Greenway Trail out of Chantilly Acres off of McPhee yep. Road. Uh, I'm with you. I thought that was a maintenance road to get to the detention pond. No, it's um, Greenway. It it stops right at the it stops at grade at, below the riprap of the outfall pipe of that pond, which across onto our property under the power line easement is you can see from the topos a natural swell that carries quite a bit of water down uh, that boundary. So to extend or connect to that trail will require multiple culverts, which even though it's a greenway trail in Farragut, they're required to be concrete culverts. Um, so I don't I don't know why y'all let them stub a trail out at grade below the outfall of a pond, but it's going to be a considerable expense to try to connect that and then run it up a natural swell, which will continue to carry water um, to find uh, a, a 20 foot space to to weave in between uh, the the, uh, the the multifamily the townhomes that we have there um, can you bring it down can you bring it down that's where it the water to, that's where yeah, the water's know, running it, yeah I mean that's yeah. where the water's running mark I, I'm just okay. fearful that the soil's bad and that we're gonna have um, you know a similar issue to building a trail in a floodplain it's going to be um, it's going to be hard to construct and to maintain and to keep it dry. I would recommend um, that that be evaluated with the town engineer because okay. I think we need to look at that closely to see what options we have. At least that's my personal okay. thought on this. I don't want to say you don't have to do it because it's stubbed out there for the intention of being extended into the I, property. I, I understand. And, and, yeah. and that was my prior comment is, is we we stub things out in the future and sometimes they, they just don't make sense uh, physically or, or, or anything else. And in, in a way, it, it, you're, you're then controlling someone else's, some property owner's um, ability on how they want to lay out or design their property, uh, even within uh, meeting all the subdivision regulations and zoning ordinances. 
but then you got these stubs sticking out that says, well, you can't do it that way because you got to connect to this. And I, and I, you know, I, I, I've built a lot of trails for you in, in the town of Farragut in, in all the projects I've done. I'm not afraid to put trails and stubs out, but sometimes they just don't make sense. So anyway, item number four, um, uh, we already got that. Uh, I've extended a trail to the Williams property. Um, item the question five. there on four was normally when we do those things or road, we look for a common property line. Because if either property were to develop, and I know this thing about the forester, but I, right. I still say that could develop. You never say never with anything. I mean, well, Thing Hill used to be a golf course, too. Well, that's um, true. Yeah, but know, Rusty, uh, Rusty was greedy for money, money when he inherited it. So, <laughs> <laughs> I would normally look at focusing on a common property line so that if either lot or to further subdivide, you have that extension that could be, you know, taken to either one in, in the event that one didn't further subdivide. So that's normally our practice. So this one well, I can I can shift it down to the Williams deed line there if you want. It, it kind of is. Yeah. No, that's a fence line. I'm on that diagonal line that comes across. That's the separation is this of 15 the, parcels. That's that's oh, the lot that line. line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah if you yeah, yeah. that'd be good. Yeah you don't okay. that's not much of a shift there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um uh, the whole cottage is a price farms thing. I, I kind of covered. I to to build 125 or 135 feet of trail to do a redundant connection to a, a mini loop. Yeah, uh, I understand I mean, that. Yeah, it, the only thing it, it, that I think that was stubbed out there because there was two lots at one time down here. I, I agree. To each yep. lot, and that's what yep. it was. Because yep. right now, the planning commission's sake, uh, and I don't know exactly where this is, but. There's another stub trail that comes in kind of like that from the cottages, and then there's one over here, and they're really yeah. close together. My comment was, if you're going to connect to this, should you go at contour to try to tie that? But again, it's not and a critical connection to me. Okay. It's just a, something to, I don't know, it's up to the planning commission what they want to see right. there. I'm I'm not I mean if if it's the if it's the prerogative of the planning commission to require that then we'll do it I just um uh, I'm I'm it, it seems somewhat redundant to me for the expense of of yeah. of uh, impervious area increased runoff and cutting more trees again the only specimen trees of which there's hundreds are all prim primarily along that north fence row and so um we're protecting it None of my uh, proposed layout or grading impacts those trees. And uh, so we really don't want to um, unnecessarily cut through that. But if it's the prerogative of the Planning Commission, then we'll do so. Um, the, uh, uh, the, Russ? Yes. Um, if you, if you, you look at those two connections um, and you look at the trees, are you better to go east? And connect with that one, or or just to connect up like what the green line shows. I'll, I'll have to consult the uh, the tree survey, Mayor Williams. I don't yeah. have it open in front of me, um, and I just got the survey data uh, about uh, three days ago. But uh, if if you want to say uh, to the most appropriate one with taking the least amount of trees, I'm I'm fine with that. Um, it, we we can definitely bend it around. It would make it flatter. To, uh, to to work across to that further one. I would agree with that. What do you think, Mark? Um, yeah, I mean, I understand the, what Russ is talking about actually on this. Um, the reason there was two stubs uh, was that there was two separate properties down here on the Schubert and we stubbed it to each property. But now that those properties have been combined in this overall development, it it is a, I, you know, and it is my comment, and I was just trying to figure out if there was a way to tie the two together so you didn't have a completely wasted stub, I guess, was what I was where I was going with that. But it's it's not a critical connection to me personally. Um, I'd be fine with stubbing, with connecting to the one that's the least impact to the tree cover and the most topographically appropriate. 
uh, if that's if the planning commission is okay with that on comment five. When I make my amended motion, uh, number five will be amended to include that the language you just stated, uh, Mark. Okay. Um, remove and, the least yeah. trees and topographically appropriate. Most to top topographically appropriate. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, number six. Yeah, yeah. number six. Um, I, I provided a note stating the minimums the town uh, for their Boyd Station road improvements. Uh, the four foot of asphalt and then six foot grass strip and and the 10 foot lane. I've had several and, and the town uh, engineer actually provided me with a detail that included curb and gutter on our side, but not on the opposite side. And I've had several conversations with him about uh, not putting curb and gutter on one side of the street since the town doesn't plan on doing it on the railroad side of the street. Uh, and because the road is so flat through there that by the time you start running pipes at minimum slopes, you're going to be way deep and it's going to be in rock and you're going to have a hard time daylighting and all that. So I'm working through those with him um, or will be during the design stages. Um, I'll be happy to, um, you know, if, if, if it's a condition of approval, um, we can definitely attach a detail um, to the approval package, revising a whole uh, plan set to add one uh, detail at concept. I'm, I'm not um, sure is is necessary uh, necessarily appropriate. The bottom line is is that if you choose to approve the plan, it includes um, widening uh, and improving Boyd Station Road on our side along our frontage to what the town requires uh, for um, uh, their bike and pedestrian plan. Um, again, I don't I don't see that as a big deal. I can I can draw a detail and send it to you now if if that's what needs to happen. Um, the trail location, well, the trail location from Boyd Station to Branch Hook Road is there a better location? Um, not necessarily between the two ponds and with the grades, um, but once we get into detailed design, I'll I'll know better if there's a better location for that trail. But I think conceptually on approval uh, or what you're voting on is that we will connect in generally somewhere in there, we will connect uh, Branch Hook down to the the, uh, the walkway on Boyd Station. Um, it, it may wiggle, it may waggle, it may move just wherever it's most appropriate. I think conceptually, uh, it just makes the point of that internal connection. Um, uh, hey, Fork Lane. It uh, doesn't have a sidewalk, not required to on dead ends. You're wanting a connection off the end. Unfortunately, that is about where the pump station is going to go. We, we are building a sewer pump station, uh, not only to serve this community, but also to improve um, FUDs. Um, um, well, they don't have any issues now, but they're projecting some limitations on some of the, the collection system over there. So uh, we're building a pump station. Um, and uh, that's the area actually while you're going through your first items and I was uh, looking at some profiles and stuff, that's pretty much the area where it's going to have to go to meet their requirements because FUD won't allow us to put gravity in over 10 feet deep. So um, I can't get it onto the other corner like I originally wanted to onto the, onto the east corner. So it's going to have to live in that area and gives us plenty, um, about 700 feet separation between intersections. Uh, for their their driveway access and all that, so um, we can look at some sort of uh, you know connectivity with with Hay, Hay Fork, but um, connecting down through there we might still be able to. But um, you know if that's if that's another connection, it's a pretty short connection, so I'm not going to get hung up on that. Mm -hmm. If if the town wants it there, we'll we'll figure out a way to make it happen. Um, that's uh. I think that's it other than item 13. Um, all, down, all along Boyd Station Road, that has to do with the apparent sinkholes along Boyd Station Road. There are, um, so far we've identified and surveyed five culverts. I'm still trying to bush hog um, thorn thicket to find the rest of them because I know there's more um, culverts down there. Um, so the... Um, those what's what's showing up as closed contours that are man-made from the road. There are pipes under the road. Um, additionally, there's another small low spot right there to the left of the nomenclature that says pond one. 
and um, but I do believe that that's just a nature of a flat area. Um, it is higher than the area to your to the right and to the left of it. So that I believe is just an anomaly from um, you know how how high was the hayfield when they flew it, and and what did they pick up or not? Um, we we are going to bore the site um, for uh, geotech investigation. So uh, obviously we'll we're we're sensitive to you know we we probably don't want any problems more than the town does. Um, so yeah. um, we're we're not going to do anything. Um, do anything out of the question, and I, I think that was it on on the uh, on the comments yeah. as it tied to the uh, the actual concept plan on the three discussion items. I have some opinions on those as well, but I will save and wait and see if the commission wants to talk about them. Well, the first discussion item was, and there, there may be other discussion items. Just from the staff's perspective, it was Iron Plow Drive whether. Whether you know we wanted a sidewalk on both sides of that really pretty long street. Well, for the we're most not really of it, saying that we want it or not, don't want it. We just we just think it is a something that needs to be thought about and considered in the discussion. And, and Mark, I tried uh, really hard, and and I want to thank you for uh, acknowledging uh, the layout because this is all me, and I've tried really hard. But I I tried to keep a greenway trail on one side and a sidewalk on the other. Um, there is one section I do not have that um, right right there through the middle, but um, I, I don't know that sidewalks on both sides is necessary. But I would say that it's it's kind of either one or the other. Um, again, I'm not a fan of the Department of Redundancy Department. If if we've got sidewalks on both sides, I don't know why you would have a greenway trail uh, some distance behind it. Um, it just seems like you know it just redundant. So. Um, and it's yeah. a lot more. It's a lot more impervious area. Uh, aside from town maintenance cost, it's it's just more runoff, stormwater runoff, and more grading and more everything. So, um, yeah, we're not I, sold on it at the staff level. It's just something we thought it might ought to be pointed out. There is some sections where, obviously, the sidewalk wouldn't make sense at all. Like where the like you said, where the walking trail, it would make no sense to have a sidewalk here because you got a walking trail. 20 feet away that runs parallel with it. Um, I think we were, you know, there might be some sections where you don't have a trail on the other side, then that's kind of what we were thinking. Yeah. If that was something that, you know, again, it, it's, it's not a requirement, but it is something that uh, we thought needed to be pointed out to the planning commission. Mark, I'll just put my two cents in. I'm not, uh, I don't think uh, we need it. The one section where it can get a little confusing, you have a sidewalk mm -hmm. on one side and a greenway trail on the other. Um, so I think, uh, and that's right by the clubhouse area, it looks like. So I, I'm fine with leaving it as <laughs> it is. Um, I know most people where we live in Fox Run are happy to have, um, simply happy to have a sidewalk on one side of uh, that major road. So. I'm I'm fine with it the way it is. Uh, Russ, Mayor, I, I agree with with what Louise just said. I think between the two points, which is uh, Branch Hook Road and over to Iron Plow, the two traffic circles. I, I don't I don't necessarily think a sidewalk or a walking trail is required or needed on the south side. Um, I do see, and I'm I'm just kind of scratching my head a little bit. He's got sidewalks in red at the traffic circles is that is that it like inside the traffic circle is that appropriate that's, Russ, to have, no have that, those that's of, not sidewalk no that's no. that that's the uh the apron, apron. the truck apron it's that's just the apron. same it's the same hatch as my sidewalks and at staff review they wanted me to color the sidewalks to make them more appropriate so i changed the plot style, but I didn't go back and create a separate layer for the concrete truck apron. No, so no, that's just I, truck I, aprons. What I, do, I don't want to encourage pedestrians to stand out in the middle of those traffic circles. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, I, I wouldn't do that. No, no. It's it's just the truck apron okay. so that trucks can navigate the uh, the, no, the roundabout. I, when it, you said apron, I I know exactly what you're talking about. Mayor, go ahead. Uh, this is for us. The multifamily are are you the ones that keep are going to keep that up? It's like a condo. You're, you're the one that's going to mow it and and yes. The, uh, okay. 
Yeah, the, the HOA for those units will have a higher fee um, than the other units that will include their landscaping. That's generally how, and they're technically they're not condos, they're, they're townhomes, uh, which is a, a pretty big distinction for um, a mortgage standpoint from my understanding, because you're actually buying the, the ground underneath the unit, you just have a shared wall with a lot line running through the middle of it. But nevertheless, yes, the HOA will be maintaining the landscaping uh, at for at least the attached units there. Um, okay. Yep. That's all I have. Anyone else have any more questions? The other discussion item was dealing with the vertical curves and design speeds, and we talked about that before last month with the Meadows and McPhee, and then the and then we talked a little bit about the third discussion item, which was a vehicular connection to the north. Yeah, on on the vert on the vertical curve design, um, the two internal loops, the one around the uh, the Branch Hook Lane and then Wagon Hitch, are designed for thirty. The larger loop, um, field roller, which is on the east side of the property with the two interconnecting roads, I designed that one for 35 because it was a large road with multiple intersections. Um, and I talked with Daryl at the staff meeting. If, if, if I mean, the, the, the regulations say a loop road, and if those other two roads aren't loop roads, I don't know what is. And if, if um, you know, it, it doesn't seem like a big deal. But the K values, um, the, the rate of, of change of a vertical curve get significantly larger. And it, it, it not only increases the cut, it more dramatically increases the fill where you're coming downhill and trying to plane out to a flatter level for a roundabout or an intersection. Um, so, I, you know, again, it, it, it would, uh, uh, it, it, it is a bigger deal than just changing a number as it relates to the physicality of construction. The current regulations have no definition of a loop road other than that it's a loop road. And uh, again, I, I see field roller with, has a lot more lots on it. So I designed that one at a higher design speed, which would allow for greater sight distance. But the, the other two loop roads in the middle of the property, um, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I wanna leave those at, at 30 miles an hour. Um, just because that's that's where it works out. And in fact, some of the curves um, exceed 35 miles an hour on those roads, but as a minimum um, on the vertical curves, uh, I've got them at 30 miles an hour. Russ, could you also um, as assume or kind of commit to the fact that if you're trying to design based upon the 35 versus the 30, especially going up field roller, going up that hill there, you're going to end up with steeper driveways. And so I kind of like the idea of, of allowing you a little bit um, more flexibility on your K values. So the driveways are actually entering people's houses. If your cuts aren't as deep, then you should be able to have not as steep a driveways getting to folks' houses. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, I, that I, I could go along with that. Um, although we do it, it in 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 our world today, it it affects your daylight point at the back of the lot because everybody's wanting slabs. So um, we're having to stair step the lots up the hill uh, to try to minimize. So nobody wants a steep driveway, um, but it, it's just the overall effect of everything. And and it's the same same discussion we had on the meadows on McPhee. Is is you you know. And, and if, if I'm more than a thousand feet in a straight line, I got to put in traffic calming, but then you want me to design it for a higher design speed. So it's just kind of a, a conflict. But in this case, I, I don't think, I'm, I'm adamant that I don't need a variance to design two loop streets to 30 because the regulations say loop streets are required to be designed at 30. There's no definition on a maximum number of units or on a maximum length of a loop street. And, and again, I recognized on field roller with two crossing roads, and, and significantly more lots that I did design that to 35 because there is going to be more traffic over there. But I think that the, the townhomes and the large 86 foot lots right in the middle of the property will have a lot more, um, a lot better feel uh, vertically uh, using the, the 30 mile an hour design speed. And then, you know, the other part of that is that the horizontal curve requirements aren't, 
aren't, aren't to, to 35 mile an hour by the sub regs anyway. So it's kind of, you know, it, it's, <laughs> it's, that's, that's the discussion y'all had about trying to get things, um, kind of get things in line. I think the, the clearly we need to define what a loop street is and assign a distance or a average sure. daily trip uh, formula to it uh, in the future. That's something that, that we certainly we need to look at. Um, I do, like I said earlier in the discussion, I do commend most of this design because it has a lot of loop streets and it doesn't have a lot of cul-de-sacs on a huge piece of property. And I think that's a really um, to me, a really good design that um, is what we're trying to encourage in our subdivision regulations and that in really rezoning it to this district, I think help allow for that really, because um, we only have two cul-de-sacs in a, in a 130 acre tract. That's pretty, pretty uncommon, frankly. Mark, do you, at this juncture with that, I mean, I, I'm supporting a 30 mile an hour design speed. Do you think that requires a variance tonight? Um, not tonight. I frankly, I think these variances on technical things like that are better handled with the preliminary plat. Okay. Because you have more um, detailed engineering at that point. The value of addressing it at to the concept level, though, is to give the designer some feeling as to how the planning commission is going to react to the more detailed preliminary plat. So uh, if you all seem to be open to, given the fact that we don't have a length defined in our current subdivision regulations for what is a loop street, uh, that you're comfortable with kind of what he's done here, then I, I think that's to me the key thing that you know you've given some input to the designer on on that aspect of the subdivision regulations if that's the way you feel um, but you know as far as taking an action on a variance i probably would really think that would be better at the preliminary plat level if if it's even required i mean these are loop streets yeah again so. that's something that may may go away with a more clear language in the subdivision regulations yeah i think his uh, intention is for the 30 mile an hour and the reasoning is sound uh I, you know I, I don't see a reason to to make that any different than the way he's got it designed personally okay um and then the stub road to the north, uh, we've heard from some of the planning commissioners. I don't know what, how you all feel about that. <clears throat> it's moving I'm it to the property line, in. is that what we're doing? Stubbing the road to the property line, yeah, along with the trail, yeah. Somewhere to the north um, where it's topographically most logical, I guess. This is Commissioner Green. Uh, I think when Commissioner Myers mentioned his uh, thoughts, I think I heard him say perhaps we could leave it as a right of way or rather than actually putting a road in there. Is that possible? Since there's a kind of, I agree that there's probably a low probability in the next 20 years that that's going to become useful. But yeah, that's possible. You could, you could require a right of way to be platted with the final plat at that point. Um, is that a reasonable that, compromise here? That's, yeah, I mean, that's an option. Yeah, that's certainly an option. Yeah, I'm, I think the walking trail itself, the staff would recommend that that actually get put in um, at this point. But uh, if, if there's a concern about the, the vehicular connection, then, uh, you know, platting the right of way is an option for that, yeah. Commissioner Meyer, what do you think about that? Uh, I think it's a step in the right direction. It um, There's not an obvious location to tie it in, and I wish there was, but I think that the location where the walking trail is currently um, conceptually designed is about as good a place as any. 
Um, I don't think moving it to the west over to the Forrester property makes sense due to the fact that I, I doubt that the Forrester property will be resubdivided the way that that particular farm is developing currently and the way those houses are being built on larger lots. But I do think that that the Williams property, um, as much as their dismay, probably will someday be subdivided and, and developed. So I do think that having the ability at, at least so the town if the town felt it was appropriate at that time which you know who knows maybe we're all dead and gone by then but at least the town could go in and and connect to a point because there's already a platted right away i would be fine with that i i agree with your assessment no i think more times than not we think nothing no, never will happen and we look at it now as it's developed and and have a, a good amount of uh, regrets and and Grigsby Chapel is a prime example. So um, I certainly agree with you. It sounds like top topographically speaking, it's a challenge um, as far as storm handling storm water. So and maybe a right of way is the platted right of way is the best way to go in this particular case. Mayor Williams, I agree. Yeah, I'm certainly in favor of the right away. I think to go ahead and develop at this point in time is way premature. Okay, I think you got good guidance there. Sounds to me so, like. Uh, should I add a 14 that says a uh, platted right of way? Um, All right. Yeah. To the north. Well, you got a 14 for, well, that the mayor had mentioned about the buffer. Buffer. What's, uh, Mayor Williams, remind me what your buffer is. Well, I think what he was talking about was if it if you're if it's 25 foot area and it backs up to existing residence house lots that there should be a required buffer strip planted there for those parts of the project. I believe that's what I that, understood. That's correct. That that's that's if there's not an, an existing tree line there. Yeah, yeah. If you got an existing tree line we don't want you to take that out just to plant a buffer that doesn't make any sense what, what so, about the house on mcphee that uh that four <laughs> years ago cut all well, their trees off y'all may want to plant a buffer there for you yeah well benefit. yeah i know i was just i was just making a point there those, <laughs> those houses seem to have cleared yeah. what they had and uh we, we i don't understand that but yeah yeah well me neither but um you know, we, we obviously we fences make good neighbors, right? We we, we like screening. Uh, so if you want to require one along the areas that there's that there's not, it, it don't really only affects um, uh, the Plato's and that one house, and then the uh, uh, alderman. Uh, um, oh my my, his name escapes me, but the alderman that lives there, Burnett. Burnett, Burnett. yeah. Burnett. Yeah, those are the only three that that don't have any any screening at this point. All right, that's fourteen. Got so those. Lee's, you'll be number fifteen. She's fifteen, stubbing the right of way to a property line, preferably the common property line there where the angle comes in, where the walking trail, stubbing that that general area. Gotcha. Um, and we got direction on the sidewalk. Uh, let's see. I think that was, it sounds like general direction on the vertical design speed. Really, we need to, we really need to deal with that in the subdivision regulations. Because Daryl makes a good point. Those are really long streets and wouldn't traditionally be considered a loop street. But it's Russ makes a good point too that they really are a loop street, um, so it's it's something that just needs to be more clear in our regulations. Really, <clears throat> Mark, if we if we've got ambiguity in our definitions, then let's put it on kind of the work plan yeah. to get it corrected. Yeah. All right. Are I we agree. ready for an amended motion? I think so. Yeah. We are. All right. I'm going to make an amended motion uh, to approve the concept plan with subject twos one through 15 with amended number five to uh, uh, 
Connect to stub that removes at least the least amount of trees and most to topographically appropriate um, at price farms. Uh, number 14, a planted buffer. Uh, we're backing up to existing houses. And number 15, stub a right of way to the property line to the north. Do I have a second? Mayor Williams will pick. Mayor Williams, yep. Okay. I will read off the roll call. Vote on that motion. Commissioner Green. Commissioner Green, aye. Commissioner Dick. Commissioner Dick, aye. Chairman Holliday. Chairman Holliday, aye. Commissioner Bellamy. Commissioner Bellamy, aye. Mr. Myers. Commissioner Myers, aye. Vice Mayor Pavlin. Vice Mayor Pavlin, aye. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, aye. Commissioner St. Clair. Commissioner St. Clair, aye. Commissioner Russ. Commissioner Russ, aye. Motion passes uh, 9 0. Thank you all for your time. Have a good night. Thank you, Russ. Thank you, Russ. Good night. Uh, Item number nine, discussion and public hearing on a site plan for the Farragut Town Center at Biddle Farms. Parcel 3.02, 3.03, 3.10, and a portion of 3.19. Tax map 143, 11230 Kingston Pike, 11240 Kingston Pike, 133 Concord Road, 37.08 acres, zone PDC, and FPD, CHM, LLC, applicant. Well, that's another long one. Um, well, you all have looked at this plan quite a bit already through the rezoning process. And, uh, you know, we, uh, the project is again, a little <clears throat> short overview. It has a, t a town center portion on the north end off of Kingston Pike um, with a uh, Aldi uh, grocery store in this general location, about 20,000 square feet. Uh, there's buildings at front on Kingston Pike as well that are part of this project. Then there's the Village Green that is a potentially going to be a public uh, property, public space for community events uh, and other gathering activities, uh, walk and trail uh, around the uh, flood plain area um, and a sidewalk connection out to Concord Road and then the multifamily portion of the project to the south. Um, the uh, introduction of angle parking onto Brooklawn Street to give, it really change the character of that street and, uh, and make it function more like a kind of town center street in a way, tie it better into this this project. So um, <clears throat> the site plan at your places, and this is a really a tough plan to deal with for the applicant and the staff because it's there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things to um, that are still kind of being worked on, like the the uh, flood insurance rate map corrections uh, that their consultant is still uh, finalizing. Um, but I guess, you know, really the applicant wants to get started with something out there, I th I'm sure. And really that's to me what site plan needs to reflect at this point. Um, you know, demolition of existing um, structures that need to come out, um, you know, initial grading uh, for the project uh, while, you know, complying with the current adopted flood insurance rate maps uh, until those are formally approved through FEMA. Um, the only building elevation that was included with this submittal was for the Aldi building, um, <clears throat> which, uh, you know, obviously indicates that they would like to get started on that. So to me, the focus of this site plan uh, there's some stuff in there that we have comments on or subject to's that probably really shouldn't be in the plan in this particular plan, like lighting. Um, you know, uh, honestly, the exterior lighting is something that we can deal with later. 
uh, in the staff's opinion, and it doesn't comply with what's shown here now. This is it's going to be really important to get the all the external lighting right for this entire project. It's going to be different than your traditional parking lot lighting and street lighting. Street lighting that can accommodate small cell support structures as part of our aesthetic plan that we've recently adopted is going to be important. So we really need to think that component of this project through very, very closely. Uh, but the general basic demolition, initial grading, I think are the key, the key components, at least from, from a staff's perspective, and then to get some feedback from the planning commission you all have seen kind of different versions of this but this is the different building elevations of the the aldi building um, and so some of the comments that we sent out to you earlier today uh, are regarding items that probably should just be removed from this phase one site plan because uh, that's really what it is uh, while that they're while they're working on the more detailed work on other things, the Park. flood maps, the, yeah, the other building elevations. We don't have any other building elevations yet either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I apologize, point of order. Just um, do you have an, an in mind which particular item numbers we can remove from consideration before I make a motion or are we gonna go through them and remove them and have another amended motion? Well, I can go through them just very briefly if that would be helpful and that way y'all have a understanding of the comments that we had at this time. Um, and it's not really a whole lot of comments considering the complexity of the project, uh, but I think- That's fine then. It's That's just fine. one of those projects that, yeah, they need to kind of do the grading holistically, but they really can't do some of it because the maps have to be approved and updated and and you know it's and then there's a lot of building elevation most of the building elevations are not included in this submittal so it's not really a full site plan submittal it's kind of a phase to me um, and that's okay it really probably needs to be phased like this um, but uh, the first comment was dealing with the exterior lighting um, which, as I mentioned earlier, probably just shouldn't be part of the resubmittal for this phase. Um, the building elevations for the Aldi building, that's really something it, we need your all's feedback on to see if you're okay with that. Um, the thing, the thought that came across um, my mind is this elevation here, it's the rear elevation that faces the back of other buildings it's not going to be a very visible location but as to whether that meets the design standards for kind of a relatively blank large blank wall for the most part um, that's something that needs to be looked at with the commission and whether there needs to be more transparency with especially with the front part of the building again this is a town center building uh, it's in the town center, so whether it needs to have a little bit more transparency than a traditional Aldi would have is something that, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't bring that up uh, as a planner, uh, given the context of where this building is. Um, just some clarification on the HVAC unit screening. Again, I don't know if it's behind these white areas. Uh, but they need to show the units and how they're being screened by the building that they're serving on the uh, the Aldi building. Uh, the building type construction, that's, I think, an easy fix. Uh, it needs to be a type one through four, not a type five construction. And again, we're talking about the Aldi building. The NF NFIP, the local flood regulations, the applicant is working on that uh, we met with them uh, a few days ago uh, they have sent us a revised map on uh, the uh, no fill lines and we will need to follow up with them on that uh, just to make sure we're clear about that uh, but until the fema approves the changes the updates to the flood maps because there's um, 
errors in the existing adopted flood maps uh, that due to more study and evaluation have been discovered. But until F FEMA approves those, we have to go by what's we have currently adopted. Uh, so that's a comment. Uh, I just had a question on the dumpsters to make sure that we've got enough dumpsters uh, for the overall development. And I'll go back to the larger project. I mean, there's quite a few dumpsters in here. Uh, again, it's just kind of a, it may be fine. Uh, the parking analysis, um, on its own, the apartments don't have enough parking. So, uh, but the PCD actually really requires shared parking. Uh, so the concern from the staff's perspective with that comment is, will people that live uh, in the multifamily portion of the development end up parking on what probably would be better served as public parking for, you know, events or the commercial portion of the, the project, uh, since there's a little bit of a shortage in the parking spaces that would be solely devoted to the multifamily. Um, that, that's a, a comment. Um, is that a comment that we need to talk, discuss tonight, Mark? Um, yeah, I mean, it's something y'all need to be aware of. Um, I'm never a big fan of too much parking, as you all know. Um, Who am I? So I am not favorite. necessarily have a problem with it. I'm just saying that it could be an issue uh, because it, it's a little bit under parked, which again, normally I don't really have a problem at all with that. Um, but again, it's, it's something that we need to point out, um, as, as we're looking at this, this site plan, I think. We could always have them park over at the JC Penny parking lot if we need. To <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, uh, that's true. Yeah. And it, to me, it's a PCD development. So really the whole thing is really designed to be shared, uh, parking. We also yeah. have parking garages. Could they have parking garages? Uh, isn't that part of it? They don't have parking garages on that one building? No, there's no parking garages in this in this development now. No. Yeah. Now there are some garages with the multifamily that are uh, at grade level. If that's what you're talking about. Yeah, that was. That's what I was. I talking think there's. About. Yeah, I think there are some of those. Yeah, I don't. I don't. The applicant can probably speak to how many of those there are. Um, the, some of the comments relate 11 through 16 were fire code related. And so that really the applicant probably needs to get with the fire marshal and potentially myself and the town engineer to talk through some of those, um, those comments uh, to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page with options that they can consider with that regard. Um, the uh, landscaping area between the building and the parking lots, uh, that's something that we, myself and Bart Hose could meet with the landscape designer on and try to figure out options for that. Um, obviously, it's a very different kind of development in the town center area, and we don't want there to be landscaping in front of the shops because that's where your your furnishing zone is, uh, your your large sidewalk, uh, the things that make it a town center. Uh, you do have street trees out here in the angled parking to give it landscape and landscaped element, but all this other area is designed to be gathering spaces. Um, so that's something we need to talk through. Um, I think with the and that's another aspect of this particular site plan that probably is a little more at a more detailed level than it, it probably needed to be uh, at, this, at this phase one initial grading demolition plan. Uh, so we could, I mean, I'd be fine taking all that out of the resubmittal and looking at that in more detail, you know, uh, as far as options uh, and then landscaping around the Aldi building. That's, that is something that appears to be 
inadequate um, and that will need to be addressed and so we'll have to work with them on on how best to do that they could utilize planters kind of like Kroger does or like the food city will be doing at the PCD development on Watt Road as an option uh, but uh, you know that that's that was an area that I think we need to look at a little bit um, <clears throat> And I think all the other stuff comments were just the, your normal reminders or just things to be aware of like street tree species. Um, as I mentioned earlier with one of the other comments, we're, uh, I'm gonna be developing a draft street tree list uh, that will be really appropriate for a street tree only application um, and uh, with different options that one may consider, but it, it'll be trees that won't branch out as far into the roadway and create potentially uh, issues where they have to be cut back and then they don't really, they kind of look at asymmetrical and don't really achieve their original objective. Um, so yeah, that's kind of an overview of uh, the staff's comments. Uh, on this particular plan at this point. I don't know if you all have any any questions or thoughts on that. Um, it does appear they are reworking, demoing the sidewalk along Kingston Pike and providing a wide, much wider grass strip. Um, and that's a, a really nice uh, addition as well to the property and a lot of uh, trails and sidewalks uh, as we've already looked at uh, during the rezoning process that are associated with this project. That's all I've got on the overview of this. <clears throat> oh, Mark, at one time there was a spring on that property and uh, uh, this has been 20 or 30 years ago. And I wonder if it's still there, if it is, when they do the landscape and if they can incorporate that into it somehow. Yeah, I think that spring, uh, I don't remember where that's at. I don't think it, I think it's in a future development area, but I might be wrong. Mark, if I can answer that. This yeah. Is color. Okay, uh, go, go back to the, uh, yeah. If you go up the, the road that connects to Concord. Okay. Yeah, it, yeah, it's way up there on it, it, up on the other side of the old existing farmhouse, right, 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 about right, right here. here. Yep. Okay. Right. Oh, okay. It may actually yeah. be further than that because that's the bridge right there. It may. Yeah, I think it's further up. Toward oh, Concord. okay, up toward Concord. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I've seen that off the road. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't mean to interrupt. But I, was I was thinking of a wetland. That's what that other one was over yeah. on the future development. Yeah. Okay, Mark, I'm I'm mm -hmm. getting ready to make a motion, and I've kind of looked through the comments that you made. Um, okay. I took I took out. I'm going to take out one. If you guys are okay. okay with this, so that we're not talking about all of this tonight, because some of it's going to we're not not going to have answers tonight for them because we're dealing with just yeah. Aldi right now. So I was going to yeah. take out one six seven eight. Hold on, one six seven eight. Okay. And 18. 18. I don't know about any of the fire code related, so I just left them all in. That's it. Are you okay with those? Uh, yeah, I mean, the only thing is with that fire code thing, um, yeah. that really is, those are comments that really probably ought to be taken out too because they okay. need to be addressed on a next phase site plan because some of those are, we really need a one-on-one -on -one discussion with them about options that they can consider to, to meet that requirement without compromising, you know, what we've talked about with the Village Green and the town center street and all that so okay all right then this is so i'm going to go the other way i'm going to say these are the comments we are taught we these are the i'm going to move for approval subject to comments two through five nine oh, okay 
2 through 5, 9, 10, 17, and 19 through 24. 9, 10. 17. So do you want to do 17 as the later one too? Because the landscaping okay. is one that I think really okay. needs to be. <clears throat> we need the time to get with them okay. on that. And take that one out and do 19 through 24. 19 through 24. Because I think really what normally we would do with something like this is similar to what we did with Top Golf and what they have right now. They got a limited grading permit. They don't have a full site plan set, finished, or stamped and approved. They've got the limited yeah. grading permit yeah. to be working, and they got a lot of work to do uh, out there. Uh, and, uh, you know, while they uh, tweak a few things on some of the other things that wouldn't really be affected too much by what they're doing right now. Okay, so, so yeah, that's um, just to that's reiterate. A good okay, all right, just to reiterate my motion, move to approve subject to items two through five, nine, ten, and nineteen through twenty four. Okay, it's Claire. I would second that motion. All right. Okay. I got it. Okay, we're ready for a vote. Well, Don't we, we need to have some discussion? No, first? I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, no. It, this is Commissioner Myers, and I applaud the developer for the complexity of this site and, and all the details they put into it. I do have some concerns that with the approval tonight, it, is it not possible that we get a one story Aldi and nothing else with this approval? Well, I mean, you have a concept plan that is part of the rezoning. Um, it, uh, I, you know, I think they've got probably a fair amount of demolition work to do. Um, and uh, I guess that's a question for the applicant is what exactly do they want from you all this evening? That's and that's a question they'll need to answer. I don't I don't know the answer to that. I can but, take a but step. We're going to put you on the spot right here. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, I think and I under, a, a complicated large development like this needs to be phased. I completely understand yeah. and empathize with that. But I do get concerned that we're approving a site plan for an Aldi. Um, and it's it's possible that you could build the Aldi and and walk away from this project. And I, I'm not sure that's necessarily the intent of the of the MUTCD. No, I, th I think that's an excellent question. Uh, Let's get, will you please, yeah, will you please yeah. give us your name and business address before you start? I'm sorry, it's uh, Bud Cullum with CHM Development, 6312 Kingston Pike, Knoxville, Tennessee. Thank you. You're welcome. And no, that's an excellent question. And let me just say, we actually thought that in this submittal, what we were asking for was the was site plan approval for all of the civil package. And, and when I say all the civil package, I mean the entire uh, commercial part, town center part, and uh, multifamily part. Uh, and then the only thing from an elevation standpoint that we had ready ready to submit was the Aldi. Now, from a construction phasing, yes, we would be planning to do start on the demolition and getting the Aldi pad ready first. But per our lease agreement with Aldi, we have to have all of the infrastructure in for the entire commercial part. That, that's a that's a requirement uh, in our lease with Aldi. Our, our our intent, we're flexible because we know we're going to be coming back for other site plan approvals. We fully expect, in fact, I think we submitted today for the elevations and the site plan approval for all of the Maldi family to be heard, hopefully at next month's uh, commission meeting. So, you know, to, to answer the question, 
our, our goal was to, to have complete site plan approval and the Aldi elevation come in next month with the multifamily elevations. And the only reason then we would be coming in, say, the next month after that uh, with the shops elevation is because we have specific tenants we're, we're dealing with who are requesting certain, you know, each, each restaurant, especially other than just a retail tenant. They want to comply with the overall look, but they always want to try to add their own little special thing to it. So we feel like since we have four or five different ones that we're working with that will require a little bit more detailed architecture, that that would be the final submittal. But our, our goal was to, was to get through planning commission, uh, if possible, with the entire civil uh and and we know as i said that with the aldi alone we're required to to do all of the infrastructure for the for the commercial part i don't know I, I, did, did that answer your question at all well it helps the, the problem is what is required in your lease agreement is not pertinent to what the planning commission can uh, approve and ultimately uh, decide when your certificate of occupancy on the aldi is determined so what, what my thought is I would be comfortable with if what you're trying to do tonight, it, in your words, is a civil package. So if, if you have your your mass grading done and you have your infrastructure done for multiple phases, and that's going to be somewhat tied to your CO with the Aldi, I, I would be comfortable with getting that approved. What I do get concerned about, and this is in um, – no reflection of you or your reputation. Your reputation's excellent, but what we don't want is all of a sudden you, you go in and you demo the existing buildings are there, and you build your Aldi, and you walk away from the project, and then all of a sudden, you know, we kind of feel like we got uh, left with a sticky bowl and somebody ate all of our pudding. And so I just want to make sure we've got some caveats in there that um, that. Um, Again, this is a multi-phase project. It's a big project. There's a lot that is uh, reliant upon what your ultimately your tenants want, um, your apartment developer. And so I think that there's I, – but again, I, I want to protect the, the land use plan and the zoning district that we've all been um, contemplating with this project and, and make sure that for some reason we just don't get stuck with just this. We, I feel like that if you – if you did your infrastructure and your grading for th all the project, and then we, we I, I kind of feel like that the point of no return would, would be, would occur, and then therefore, you, you know, the next phases, you know, maybe in six months or a year from now, we would get phase two and then phase three, and who knows, maybe phase four. But again, what we don't want is just a, a one-story Aldi sitting there all by itself in a in a parking lot. I think from from uh, from my perspective in looking at the sheets that were submitted, what the what I think you probably really should only submit for this would be the the demolition sheet, the erosion control sheets. You have three phases of SWIP sheets, the drainage, and this is all based on the current flood maps that we have, the drainage and grading plan sheets, and the utility sheets, and the tree preservation sheets since it relates to grading. But all that other stuff, lighting, landscaping, um, anything else that's not relevant to civil or not directly relevant, should probably need, doesn't need to be in this this package. Because uh, I think that would clean it up quite a bit since there's only one building elevation. I think, you know, from my perspective, the applicant needs your guidance on the Aldi building for sure. But as far as doing the civil work to get it to, you know, a pad in place, that is kind of what this plan, I think, is trying to do. Uh, but you all do need to weigh in on your thoughts on the appearance of the Aldi building uh, so that they have guidance when they submit the more detailed information with the other site components that you typically see beyond the basic civil drawing sheets that's just my perspective on it because i think that that would allow them to get started you know with a grading permit uh, 
and then the more detailed stuff and all the the, the other site components that are you know going to take a little bit of coordination more coordination with us and fema and things like that um, could be addressed you know with subsequent site plans that would be brought to you all this is commissioner green the agenda item says a public hearing on a site plan for the Farragut Town Center. Sounds yep. like we should reword that a little bit to say a hearing on the demolition and initial grading plan for the Farragut Town Center to build a property. Does would that work for us? And, and then but put in. But the, he's constructing the Aldi's. He's getting ready to construct the Aldi's. And that's, that's part not of what, this. But that's not what we're approving at this this from what a conversation that i've heard that's really not what we want to approve at this point well he that's needs what direction the on the aldi building. The, the applicant has asked for approval for the aldi and so if all of a sudden the applicant meets all the the requirements in this particular site plan that we're approving tonight for the aldi the applicant could get the co for the aldi the tenant could move in um, and then, um, you know, either the project move forward or it doesn't move forward. Uh, obviously, we all want it to work. This, it's a big investment that the applicant is making. Obviously, there's a there's a, a, a lot of a lot of issues that are going on here that we, we all want this to work. I just don't want to I, I just don't want to all of a sudden end up with a with an Aldi and nothing else. But the Aldi is part of this package tonight that we're approving, which is fine. I do think we need to spend a little time in talking about the architecture and the elevations of the Aldi, but uh, yeah. but the, the big 10,000 foot question is exactly what we are approving tonight. Well, Commissioner Meyer, then what would what would make you comfortable? Because he's got to start somewhere and one uh, building's got to get built before he can build uh, the second or third. Uh, the, the Aldi is the anchor and that's kind of the glue that holds everything together. I, I uh, understand and, and respect that. I mean, that's that's the part that hopefully will bring other retailers and make everything else easier to, to be able to work. We just don't, um, I, I just want to, this is complicated. We are, we are in um, uncharted territory in the town of Farragut with a project like this. It's a mixed use project that is multifaceted and complicated. And I'm just trying to figure out, okay, how do we go from here? If the, if the, if the applicants mass grading the site, which is what I would do if it was my site because of the economies of scale and putting all the infrastructure in. And as long as that infrastructure is ongoing, what I wouldn't want to see is, you know, just the demolition and just the infrastructure around the Aldi, the Aldi get built and then something happened. Again, nobody has a crystal ball of what the, the economy is going to look like in a year or two from now. Who knows? I mean, let's hope we're not in a, another major recession and, the applicant can keep moving forward with the project, but we, I just want to talk about this so we we think holistically about what we're approving. And because otherwise, if an applicant came to us and said, "Hey, I just want to build an Aldi," we we would have said no. But be, due to the fact that there's there's other facets that make this project very attractive and meet a lot of the things that that the community and the planning commission and the board made Alban wanted to see in the land use plan as well as the MUTC, then we've kind of acquiesced to saying, okay, we think an Aldi in this particular location along with the other elements is appropriate. And and I'm not sure what the right answer to this is. And I, I'm hoping some folks that are smarter than me can figure out, okay, guys, this is how we can somewhat safeguard um, uh, uh, this approval tonight to make sure that we're going in the right direction and we're we're setting the bar to a certain height that that we're going to eventually get again we don't know what the economy is going to look like but we want to be able to to be able to make sure that that we try to protect what we've all been striving for no uh, i think you're talking about risk mitigation but don't we run a risk and i may be wrong don't we run a risk just about with any development whether it's going from the economics or even just the uh, developer's own financial situation outside the you know, overall economy thing. You know, we have an inherent risk in just about every major development. I mean, it's not a one for one analog, but I mean, you know, a major subdivision and we have the uh, entrance and we have the uh, community <laughs> amenities with the 
the pool and rec center and what have you, and then we have maybe three houses, and then all of a sudden the subdivision, you know, goes bust. Uh, you know, we're left well, with, a, with a, so we we have an inherent risk, I think, in everything, and with both the developer as well as the overall economy. But then the second thing I think we haven't really addressed in the motion yet is this really talking about the uh, the Aldi itself. I, Ed, you're exactly right. Every development has a risk. Obviously, we we all um, participated to a certain degree and suffered through the risk that happened when developments were partially finished uh, during the recession. And wh what we're just hoping is what we don't want to do is is um, is we we're acquiescing to something maybe that we wouldn't have otherwise acquiesced to, and we're not getting the other components. Again, we can't force these other components. I mean, it's all driven by the amount of pre-leasing that the developer can do. We're just we're just hoping that. I mean, I, I would feel a little more comfortable if the Aldi and the multifamily was kind of in part of that phase one, or at least a couple buildings of the multifamily piece. It all kind of ties into that downtown architecture. I just get more, worried. More critical what, mass is what you're talking about. I'm sorry. Say again, Ed. More critical mass, so that there's a momentum. Other than just a standalone building. Yeah, well, I, again, you've heard my concerns. I, what I don't want is 10 years from now, you know, we still just got an, an Aldi, a, a tan one story Aldi sitting out there. And we're like, gosh, we're all scratching our heads going. That's not what our vision was. I, I, I'm not saying that's going to happen. We just need to think about the. the I, I agree with you. I just don't know how to mitigate it. <laughs> I um, okay. insert myself here a little bit. I, I understand. We, you're right, um, Commissioner um, St. Clair is correct. We this is there's a risk in everything, so um, the developer needs to get his Aldi underway because he has a contract with Aldi, and Aldi is the um, is the uh, what do we call that? The store that's um, the, the anchor. anchor. So he needs to get that started. Um, he, he's got a contract with them, um, and we're going to get rid of the Kroger building. So, um, yay, if the, I, I plan on being there the day they, they bring, start taking that Kroger building down. So yeah, I, I, I think at, we, we can gnash for a while and, and be concerned about the risk we're taking here, but, um, getting rid of the Kroger building is a win. Uh, I don't care. It's a win. So, and, and he needs to get started on the Aldi's so that he can continue to um, move with this, uh, can I raise? No, yeah, there's no solution. Uh, no, no, but, I don't but, think but there's a solution. You have you have an idea that maybe you could share with us? Well, I, I said this earlier, but I, it, it, we actually thought we were submitting for approval for the entire plan. And when I say civil, maybe I used the wrong term. We thought we were submitting for approval for everything except the multifamily elevation and the shops elevation and the multifamily elevations were for, were submitted today for approval at next month's meeting. So I guess in my thinking is if, if there was any intent or hope or, or possibility that I was going to do nothing with but the Aldi, then my my intent would have been more along the lines of what Mark was suggesting is let's pull all this stuff out and only and only per, only in this meeting uh, approve the Aldi and the demolition right around it. When I said the civil for the Aldi for my lease, I didn't just mean the grading. I meant every parking space, every road, every tree, every grass, and everything on that entire commercial park other than each building itself, but everything else, the street lighting and everything has to be there I, per my lease agreement with Aldi. So for me to do all of that and then be bringing the multifamily in elevations for approval next month, again, my, my goal when we, for instance, when you look at the difference between what we can do for the town's regulations on grading for the overall site versus what we will need the FEMA revision for, we can do probably 95%, maybe higher. There's a tiny little area out by the entrance uh, off of Kingston Pike uh, 
Uh, if you look at that one little building right there, go up a little bit, Mark, right there, that little building, we would have to wait until we got the the back from the FEMA. And then there's uh, another little area on the next sheet over when you go back further into the multifamily sheet. Uh, but and then there's even an area per the hydrology studies off of our property uh, behind the new Kroger that the the old the Blanchard and Calhoun I still refer to them, people own and we've already worked out an agreement where we will fill part of that and so th that was all in this submittal I'm not trying to be argumentative with staff we are flexible because we know we're coming back you know I don't have to have all of that approved uh, because I can't go out and literally start every bit of that next month but I guess what I'm trying to say is we're we're sticking it all out there and we were asking for for approval for everything we certainly if there was if there was any idea that we would end up doing nothing but the Aldi we certainly wouldn't have done it yeah, and, and tried to get the approval for the whole thing there's I mean you know again I, I don't want to be argumentative but there's four or five of these things on the on the list of 24 or, or whatever that or 23 there's three or four that we took out that I could probably answer uh in the affirmative uh very very quickly to get them resolved do i have to have them resolved tonight no so i'm going to acquiesce to to the staff and to the commissioners i guess what i'm trying to say to to commissioner meyer is our our intent was to get this whole thing approved and if, if that was our intent hopefully i'm showing you good intent that there was there's no way that i'm going to be in a position to be able to just throw up the aldi now if we have a a complete depression and I go bankrupt, you know, yeah, maybe something like that would happen. But uh, I don't know how to answer it anymore. But hopefully I think I'm one, sure. yeah, one way to address this to me is, and, and, and I agree that, and I'm not saying that we weren't recommended to approve the grading of the whole site and staff is fine with that, the civil component of it. I think some of these, these, these items dealing with the fire code, the lighting, the landscaping, um now whether the parking's an issue or not it you know that um those things you know if they, they need to be worked out at some point um whether the commission's okay with making those comments subject to, to more um conversation and work with the town staff and then reflecting that on a revision to this site plan. What I didn't want to have was to have a site plan set that had a whole lighting package that wouldn't work. Um, so, and you know, so that I think a vast majority of the plan sheets, you know, are relevant and I understood that and we don't have, I don't think a problem with it, especially if you're following the existing adopted flood maps, which as you mentioned, most of the vast majority of it uh, is, and the areas that aren't will just need to be unaffected until FEMA does formally uh, approve those um, updates to the firm maps. Um, so we, I might have been misleading. It just that there were some components in this site plan set that need that need a lot more attention with the staff before they're ready in my opinion for the planning commission to act on them and perhaps those could be addressed with the additional building elevation stage of the project um, but you know that i don't have a problem with the civil for the whole project and we at the staff level understood that was your intent so i'm not saying just great around the aldi building i've never really said that um, it's it's basically just that the Aldi building is one that we got the building elevation submitted for, and I think we do tonight need to have a conversation about that building uh, and whether the commission feels that it, it's okay. Um, and uh, and then just working out the some of the other areas and having those reflected on subsequent site plan submittals that will come before the planning commission i'm personally fine with that this 
Commissioner Myers, let me let me throw out an idea here, and and see how how Bud receives it. What about any of the improvements that are ultimately going to be dedicated to the public? What if what if those improvements were secured by a, a letter of credit? So it doesn't doesn't guarantee that we're going to get the other buildings. It doesn't guarantee that we're going to get the multifamily, uh, which are all components that that we've approved and we want. But but maybe some of the other the improvements that are maybe the angled parking in the public right of way, maybe it's the the green that is ultimately going to be deeded over to the what appears to me that's going to be deeded in a public right of way to the town of Farragut. I mean, maybe the, some of those improvements could be secured by a, a letter of credit and that would give us some some assurance that we feel like that, hey, if, if something happened and, and the, the project fell flat that the the town of Farragut could go in and 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 complete some of those improvements and and that obviously we have done that in the past and, and one thing before i get into that I, I might point out there was an actual phasing plan that was approved along with the concept plan uh and i think we're i think what we're talking about is still is still adhering pretty much to that but i know no, to answer your question, obviously we've put up bonds and we've put up letter of credits. The the trick with the letter of credit is if you're not careful, you're having to borrow the same money twice and you've probably been through this. So, so to give you, a, for instance, if I'm going to build a road and it's a million dollars and the town says this is a road that we're going to have uh, and so as a margin of safety, we want to you to post a letter of credits, say for a million two fifty. Uh, where you run into the problem is you go to the bank and you say, okay, I want a million dollars to build the road. Uh, okay. And then you say, now I need a million two fifty letter of credit. So all of a sudden you're actually having to borrow two million and 250 to build a million dollar road. Now, what I have done in the past is I've worked out arrangements where, uh, you know, maybe with, with, with the construction lender, uh, to, to you know, through a document with the town so that the town knows that the, the construction lender can, can step in. Uh, it, it, there's, there's various ways to do it. I've done letters of credit all my career, so it can be done. I'm just saying that before we go to a whole lot of effort in that, that, that can become problematic just because it, it's essentially you're having to finance it twice. Well, no, there's no doubt it affects borrowing capacity but it shouldn't cost you the same interest that borrowing the money does to build the actual road. But the, the, other, the other thought that is, you know, maybe there is, maybe your CO on the Aldi is tied to some public improvements um, to give you plenty, plenty of time to be able to get your other public improvements um, either completed or substantially completed prior to the CO. I'd hate to tie it. We, you could tie it to the building permit, but then, that chronologically that may really hold your project up but if it was tied at the very last when you're trying to turn the keys over to aldi and you're going to start receiving your lease payments then there are some public improvements that we expect that you've agreed to to incorporate and implement in your project and maybe there's maybe that's another way to kind of skin this cat um to, to give ultimately the constituents and the taxpayers and ever all the all the parties that that are stakeholders in this, which is the entire town of Farragut, being that this is the heart, it's not just a subdivision down on Boys Station, which is kind of out of sight, out of mind. It is right in the middle of the heart of our town, and it's it's just kind of important that that um, that you know that we we try to be able to get um, as close to what everybody's agreed to provide. That's that's the best idea yet. That that's. You're right. Tying it to a building permit's not going to get you anything, but tying it to the CEO, uh, I not only have you breathing down my neck, I have Aldi breathing down my neck, which is even more. Right. more. And, and one of the other things I just remembered that I had done in the past, and it could be a it could be a function of both of these, is I would have a payment performance bond on the site contractor that's in charge of doing all that and covering the whole cost of it. And I have in the past, in a situation like this, had that had the contractor make the town as a as an additional insured on that payment performance bond. Yeah, well, we're we're getting outside of my area of expertise, but 
I mean, that's something that the uh, town attorney, Tom Hell, but to me, the CO uh, or a letter of credit, both of those are kind of black and white, and the town staff has a lot of experience with both of those avenues to try to make sure somebody completes the, the items that they've agreed to complete. And again, I'm not I, talking about building all your multifamily and building all the retail. We understand that the retail, may, it may come fast, it may come slow. I mean, we all know retail has been turned on its head with COVID, but we, we just don't, uh, we, we want to make sure that, um, that, that ultimately the, the project's going to kind of look like the vision that you propose to us. It, it may take five years or 10 years or 20 years, but I, I think there needs to be some caveats in there where it somewhat holds your feet to the fire to, to, to make your best efforts to be able to try to complete those things based upon whatever economy we're in at that moment in time. Yes, and that and obviously, if if I've got all that infrastructure in there, the chances of those buildings going ahead and getting built is much better than if it's than if it's literally just the Aldi and their parking field in front of it. Agree. Yeah, it's it's a heck of a big investment to walk away from if you had all the infrastructure in there and you only did the Aldi. So we feel like yeah. that it, there there wouldn't be a you know any kind of shell game going on that 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 everybody's all uh, uh, reading off the same page here. Let me ask a question here. May I ask a question? Um, a little timeline on what, in my mind, what you're planning on doing. The first thing you're planning on doing is demolition on that whole building that's Kroger, used to be a CVS, and that whole thing will go. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And then um, you will lay out the the Aldi's building and the parking lot adjacent to it. Is that the next step? That will be the that will be the next step, but but almost simultaneously will be will be uh, the demolition of the entire of all of the commercial side uh, parking lot and putting in the new utilities and and then ultimately coming back with all of that paving. The one thing that potentially would lag uh, would be the the new bridge and the new road out to Concord Road. And the reason for that is we cannot do that until we get the final clomer back from FEMA. That's the map revision be because we're to do that. We, to do that bridge, we have to be in the floodway. So right, we can't. Right. So so I would ask for I would I would I would want to be able to do everything else uh, from a site plan standpoint in the commercial part uh, and potentially be able to open the Aldi before that road was finished out to Concord. So the, so the whole parking lot will also go away quickly too. I, I believe I'm going to, uh, uh, I've got two of my helpers on, but I'm pretty sure we're, we're, when we go out there and start demolishing everything, we're not trying to save any of that parking lot. Is that correct, John Anderson? Yes, that's correct. Okay. okay. I thought so. I wanted to make sure. Okay. And then shortly after all of that is cleared away, you will start repaving the parking lot. Yes, the, we will, there'll be a lot of utility work. The, the paving part will be the last thing, but, the, but our plan is to open the Aldi and have all of that paving, every, everything on the commercial side done, except the, potentially the individual buildings. If, if we have our if we have our way about it, we would have almost all of those buildings finished. Also, uh, that's a, that's a function of the leasing uh, momentum we get right now. It's pr pretty good. But that, um, well, that area for those buildings will be laid out as such already at yeah. by that point. Yes, yeah, okay. sidewalks would be in median. Parking, all the parking spaces, and you name it. Yes. And the pads for the building. I'm sorry. And the pads Pad. for the building. Yeah, the pads. The pads for the, if the buildings themselves weren't there initially, the pads would be there in the sidewalks and everything. Our okay. intent would be that if there was anything lagging on the shops after initial opening, that it would simply be coming back and digging the footings and going up with the walls. But all of the rest of the infrastructure around it would be complete. Parking, paving, parks, landscaping, site lighting, everything. Yeah, what y'all are talking about, we, we've done this a number of times. The Overlook Apartments, 
we did that in phases. We didn't issue a CO for the first building until the, you had a, the proper improvements for that building were in place on the site. And that would be the same way here that we certainly have the ability if we don't think that the site is up to to the uh, level of completion uh, that it needs to be to serve the building that we're as somebody's requesting the co for then we won't issue the co okay uh, can i so, can i yeah just can we uh it's 11 10. <laughs> yeah it's and we still have a lot to get through so are we comfortable? Can we move on from, do we have uh, something that we can hold as a carrot or a stick or the as the case might be that um, we feel comfortable that this can proceed and, and we can start discussing some of the, the, the um, material issues that we're supposed to be discussing tonight. I'm, I'm comfortable with the CO. Okay. I, I'm fine with that too. That, that sounds good. Are we going to discuss um, the all the elevation? Yes, yeah, no, I do want to make one one comment before we start discussing the all the elevation because I think we might have to discuss it as a planning commission to recommend a change. I know that there was issues with um, the fire road width um, around the green. Is that yeah. what I recall, Bud? That's something that needs to be worked worked out with the staff and then presented okay. to you all. That's one and of because the comments it, that we need. To it's probably going to require a zoning ordinance change to uh, to for a more urban development style. This is my understanding uh, of from the conversation. Is that correct? I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I Please, don't think I think you, need to, I mean, I, you need to be a little bit clearer there for everybody. I'm sorry. That's that's one of the few. The one of the three or four issues that were you know that we needed to have more discussion with the applicant on before i think okay. those those components of the plan are ready for you all to approve in my opinion okay um, so we most we of the components on the grading and all that are i think we're pretty good on those things i don't you know it's just uh some of these these comments that we have uh but we need to have a pretty in-depth discussion with the town engineer and the fire marshal myself and applicable okay. people from the design team to figure out what options there are to address all right things. So that's not going to be settled tonight until you guys all come no. up with a plan that you can propose to us that's right okay so i i'm going to leave that back off the table just know that that is still a conversation you guys need to have Okay, can we, we'll go ahead and move into talking about this, the, uh, all these elevations. And I'm not starting that conversation. Someone else can start that conversation. <laughs> well, well, earlier, Mark uh, made a comment about uh, the, the back of the building, uh, and it'll face the other buildings. It will not be something that's in your face, uh, which most yes. of the supermarket yes. buildings do face away from you. You're not looking at the back of the building. Of course, this one here is quite nice in the fact that it's all brick. So um, I don't think it's a eyesore by any means. Um, yeah, I highlighted the area that that would be, it's that red line. So it would back or up would, to the would back. Would it back up to other buildings? Yes, it backs up to the back of a couple of shops. At this point, those shops could change the footprint a little bit, depending on what they, yeah, you know, out, the, but. The, the rear elevation of the Aldi is being kind of an alleyway in between the Aldi and future buildings. Yeah. And I'm not as concerned about that. I am concerned about kind of some lack of some detail and kind of breaking up the 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 kind of the monotone look of the side elevations and that there's some things that yeah. that we incorporated for instance at the the new starbucks which was some brick details of where you kind of look like basically false windows and changing patterns in the brick that on the on the side elevations which i really think would help um bring the aldi more into compliance with our mutc
Yeah, that was, an, that was an observation I had was it might need some additional transparency elements to the window space. And, you know, well, it's it's a I lot I, of, you know, I agree. hardscape. I, I can live with the rear elevation. I, I'd really like to spend some time on the front elevation as well as the two side elevations. Um, and and let's just let's spend a little bit of time talking about that and, and how to kind of break that up a little bit and um and maybe do do some details which are not that big a deal to do some details in there that um again is kind of more in keeping with a town center i agree uh no with your your position with the um maybe some having some um i guess for lack of a better word texture with those bricks having some kind of different pattern so it's not so just a blank wall um certainly i don't have a problem with the rear elevation that backs up between the buildings it's not going to be very visible only to people walking through a, the alley and it's that's just not all well, that i'd like to talk about that a little bit more if we could go uh site plan about the rear elevation i do have a question Yeah, obviously it's blocked by two of those building pads, but there is that common area in between those buildings. Ed, let me, let me run back to the site plan here. I think you're on it. Yes, yeah, so you're it. talking. Yeah. I'm talking about the, the, talking area, about the area between the two way. building pads to the east of the Aldi's behind you're it. Talking the We'll call it a courtyard, the courtyard yeah. between the buildings. Yeah. So yeah. I do have some concern about what's going to be visible and what there. what character a, a certain area that is, rather than just a, a you know, the flat wall. That area right yeah, there. You, yeah. yeah, you would see the wall from those people that are in that gathering space and potentially some of these edges. That's true. As with other grocery stores that we have, um, and other commercial buildings for that matter, uh, wouldn't that alleyway be more of an area for all three of those buildings to um, ha have their trucks come in and that sort of stuff? Is that the no? All the comes in on the uh, west side there, that little cutout. That's where your tr truck load is at. That little inset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, they'd come in here and back Which is out, on the front, actually. or then come in here. So this to is me, that also begs a question. Begs right a there. question: Do you could you envision even an entrance? You know, maybe not a big entrance, but uh, an entrance to the Aldi's on that side from that from those buildings. Oh, you mean from I the mean, courtyard? I mean, from the green? The no, green I uh, there's an area there that needs, I think, to be looked at relative to how does it integrate. <laughs> with the you know the other two buildings there in that other area the other commercial area rather than just being a blank wall to the back like it yeah really just an alley yep. yeah yeah that's what i foresee it as is an alley and and yeah and I, think, so I think that's wrong we just want to make it a common just an alley yeah at least in that certain that one area in the middle there well, and then you got to wonder what's the what are the other two those two buildings going to look like? Um, you you may be able to get some kind of idea about what you want to do in that that particular space that they it kind of all coordinates and works together. So yeah, that's um, my point. Yeah, I'd like to be able to offer the. the it's not just a regular building. <laughs> well, I I agree, but I'd yeah. like to be able to. Offer the applicant the ability to kind of push and pull those smaller buildings based upon its tenants needs and so i mean it, it, it i That's don't true. think there's separate entrance to the aldi because i think that defeats the way the aldi point of sale location is and a lot of other issues but i i, but I think there maybe is some ways that you know maybe you could um for lack of a better word you know try to incorporate some design features maybe on the back side of the building maybe it's more visible yeah. than than I, what i was thinking about with a with just an alleyway where and maybe it's just as simple as putting in some false brick windows and some things 
back there yeah. so it just doesn't look like the back of a building the uh, but I, again i, I don't want to force maybe it's just i don't in that one area well yeah but i don't want to force the developer to say you know whatever the, these footprints of these smaller buildings are 50 by 80 and he might all of a sudden you know so that's a 4000 square foot footprint he may have somebody that says well i really need a 6000 square foot restaurant so i'd like for him to be able to which is which is a big restaurant but I'd like for him to be able to push and pull those buildings based upon the needs of his tenants um, to be able, you know, and, and to be able to incorporate outdoor gathering spaces or courtyards or, you know, outdoor dining areas and so forth. But I, I do think we need to spend a little bit of it. If we're going to approve the Aldi tonight, I think we, we need to spend some time on the architecture of the Aldi. And we're all kind of talking about these different things, whether it's the loading or the where the entrance is and the back walls and so forth. I, I am I'm not picking on Bud because I know he is he's dealing with corporate design standards from Aldi, but it, it's a pretty plain Jane Aldi that's kind of stuck in our town center. And um, it, it, it would be nice if it incorporated some features that were more in keeping with our MUTC uh, design philosophies. Boxcar Bud. I'm not suggesting I'm not suggesting that it has an interest. So all I do is just trying to make sure that we're looking at it as not just back wall like behind Kroger uh, for instance uh, you know across the street where you your only access is you're going over there to make a pickup or or deliveries or, or whatever over there this is not just your every you know back wall to, to that building that's my point and what we can do to enhance that as far as the architecture and and uh, I say their standards all these standards I'm always guarding back to the Costco conversation and the fact that uh, I had seen Costco's with much more architectural uh, appealing <laughs> fronts and what have you in other places. When asked the direct question, the answer came back from Costco representative, well, you all didn't, uh, don't require it. And, uh, and by golly, this town center, we require some things. I agree. I will say this. I walked, uh, I finally took a walk to um, um, Brooklawn and walked through there. There's a little area that, you, Allie, you can go to the back of the the um, shops area where the, um, the trail is. And we have a nice walking trail with beautiful trees and you look at the building and it's really, it's unattractive. So this is far better than anything that you're seeing at the back of the Kroger now. I mean, obviously that these are two different things, but that is in our mixed use town center. And we didn't hold them to really any kind of standard when we knew a trail would be back there. So, um, just, I understand what Noah's saying. I understand what, um, um, Ed's saying. The, the problem is you could ask them to put this thing in uh, any kind of like geometric or square or rectangular thing that looks like a window, brick window, and it could be not placed right because of the way he ends up building the buildings that it backs up to. Then it looks out of, um, you, you know, it just it doesn't frame the space right. And that's a concern as well. So. I'm wondering if we should look at the Aldi, just the building elevations, when we look at the multifamily uh, next time, as far as, I think they need to hear a little bit more specific guidance from from you all, but I think the, it's pretty clear to me that some changes need to be made. Uh, and uh, we can't design it tonight for, the, for them to do that, um, but it's something that maybe they could if they got some kind of macro input, you know, on the the major things that need to be revisited, maybe on this, um, then just let's look at that in relation to the multifamily elevations. Because really, to me, all the buildings need to have in the whole PCD need to have kind of a symmetry with each other. And I think that's what Ed's talking about. And that's a good point is even though that's the back of the building, it's real close to two buildings that front on the on your main street, um, and it really needs to be kind of visually integrated with with those buildings somehow to where it kind of 
uh, has a different feel or different character to it than a big, you know, kind of hardscape uh, feature. So, I, I mean, I don't know, you know, I think that's what I would, I mean, again, the civil stuff could go ahead and move forward potentially if that's what the planning commission is comfortable with. But then these, these building elevations may, we may need to look at that next time, you know, to, you know, give us some time. We could also kind of look at some revisions at the next staff developer meeting uh, and, you know, <clears throat> look at look at all those building elevations and take action on those uh, at the next meeting. That that we were going to suggest that actually, and uh, I guess my question is, since this has already been submitted, uh, and of course the next meeting, the submittal date was today, uh, but this would be already considered to be submitted, and we're just uh, pushing it for a vote to the next month. And well, the next the next deadline, but is actually the nineteenth. Oh, okay. Next Monday. But if this is submitted <laughs> and and the commission says we want to discuss this uh, uh, some more, because because mm -hmm. frankly, what I need to do is I need to have the Aldi people get with the staff, and I think the staff is getting a good idea uh, from the commissioners. Of some of the concerns, and, or or we'll get a few more as we as we finish up, and because this is, you know, I'm in the middle on this, frankly. Aldi, Aldi, I'm my lease with Aldi is a ground lease, and they're building their building, and uh, so if we could if we could do that, if I could go back to Aldi and say, look, everything's moving forward, but you're going to have to get you and your architect with the staff, and and. And, and you know, over the next thirty days, is it, is that what you're saying? I... Well, I think we need to. They need to. It, it's up to your timeline on that, on the building elevations. But um, and the staff's just one. We we just have you know. We're it's ultimately going to be the planning commission. I think the good the feedback we need tonight is the the big items that might need to be looked at, and it seems like. What I've heard so far is maybe looking at some of these these larger kind of sections of hardscape and seeing if we can visually break those up or incorporate some additional transparency with those things on this rear elevation, trying to make that more engaging, even though it's a, a rear elevation with what it abuts. Um, and, um, you know, because it is going to be visible in different uh, areas <laughs> and uh, yeah. maybe you focus on those view sheds and <clears throat> try to break that up a little bit but and I don't you know that's just what I've heard so far at least I don't know if any other the commissioners have other specific feedback that that could be given and but well they still have to address you know one of our earlier comments on the type construction so <clears throat> I mean yeah, I I think they've they're going. I mean, they understand they have to build it with that. Yeah, I'm not really sure why it was shown as type five B on the plans, um, but anyway, yeah, that well, it, we're making that known to them. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty standard with a building like that. Is you don't you don't build it out of type five B. But and and I speak just for me and not for the planning commissioners, but I think if we could incorporate more red brick into this building than brown or tan brick. Now, technically brown and tan fits our color wheel of approved choices, but I, I really think that our vision for this town center is probably a little bit more red brick, at least it is It is for me. And I've seen some some Aldi's that, that have some red brick. And so it'd be kind of nice. And and maybe even it's it's a combination of multiple, but what I'm seeing a, a right here on these elevations is kind of a monotone brown and tan building that, um, you know, looks like a normal Aldi that we pretty much see anywhere. And it's, it's um, and we're just trying to, we're, we're trying to give you the ability to incorporate this building in our town center uh, because of the other things that you're bringing to the table and uh, and we just we just need a little bit of assistance. And if you want to make us the bad guy with Aldi, that's fine. 
but I, I, I think we've, we've just got some details to work out um, on the Aldi elevations b- before we can get comfortable w- with approving it. And that's, uh, I guess, a couple things to address that. First of all, unfortunately, just an architectural elevation a detail like this never does the real deal justice. We actually submitted uh, actual brick samples, uh, yeah. kind of wall boards. <laughs> and Mark, maybe you would disagree, but the, when you see the brick samples in person that we submitted that Aldi uh, approved, it looks a hundred times better than the picture that I'm looking at right now on the computer screen. Yeah, and those are in my office. I got a good workout bringing them in here. So <laughs> any, if any of commissioners wants to come by and look at that, they're certainly welcome to. Just let me know. Uh, but they're in front of my desk. Uh, and and I know you, you know. Yeah. Also, we went we went I went back and forth on many, many iterations of, of renderings more on the on the multifamily building. But when we went through Board of Mayor and Alderman, uh, making making many, many revisions to to try to get everyone happy and it, it, it has some red brick in it and it has some brown brick in it. I think the overall look, uh, you know, <laughs> I might point out this this particular elevation we're looking at is not a whole lot different than what we had when the concept plan was approved. But I do remember talking about breaking up some of those uh, areas on a couple of those sides, and I think I think there's probably certainly ways that Aldi can do that on that back wall again. Again, wherever the break is. And what is that? About thirty to forty feet, John Anderson. Can you tell me the the courtyard area? Yes, it's like forty feet between the buildings. So, so forty feet. So you stop and think about. You're only going to be seeing forty feet because the <clears throat> the well, frankly, if if I land who I'm working with for that area right now, it's going to be a restaurant that's backing up to it, and that alleyway is how. It's not even, you can't even, what is it, 10, 15 feet? Ten feet between Aldi and those shops. So yeah, so 10 feet. So you really, you're not going to, you're not going to be seeing more than 40 feet of that building. It's in the courtyard. When we put restaurants in there, you know, our restaurants are going to be dressing that up. You're not even going to most likely even see any part of the Aldi wall because they're going to have some kind of a treatment for their outdoor guests. I would, I would think, uh, anyway, that's just, I'll shut up. And one thing you could do on that back wall, if you look at the side view, the side elevation that's down at the very bottom, uh, to the right, before you get to the loading dock, you have an area that's taller than the rest of the building. Uh, and you have that in different places, but if that was what you've seen through that 40 foot opening, uh, that, mm-hmm. that is a design feature that's different yeah, than different. just a blank wall. And it could be different colored brick. If you've got red and blue. Yeah. He, he's talking about just put, putting a little taller parapet wall back there yeah. that would line up where that courtyard is. Just, just again, just to break up the wall. The, the, the rear elevation, again, wasn't as much of my concern. I do understand seeing it from the courtyard. And I think it could be addressed with just a taller, just a parapet in that area. I was more concerned about kind of the side elevations and the kind of the monotone nature. Again, I have not seen the samples in Mark Shipley's office, but um, again, you know, this is something, unfortunately, it's just held to a little bit higher standard than in the rest of the town uh, due to the fact that of where it's located in our MUTC. The other thing is the, uh, but is, are those, uh, uh, I guess you call them gray areas up on top, or that, is that the shielding for the heat and air units? I'm going to have to defer to Don Kendall on that. I'm not sure. A question hey, to you, Don. Don. Ken- yeah, Don Kendall, Development Management Group, uh, 4209 Gallatin Pike, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, what you see in that elevation um, is the backside of those parapets from the other side. 
uh, we had a conversation with the architect uh, for the Aldi earlier today, and they are going to they're going to revise these elevations to show the mechanical units dashed in. And if there's any that are exposed above the parapet walls, there will be screening that will be added there so that you can't see them. And they provided us with some details on that. And my my direction to them was, as long as that's on your plans, you'll be fine. Okay, so that is a concern. Oh yeah, and, and they understand that that you can't see those from the ground level. So they're aware of that requirement and they are fully ready to meet it. Okay, thank you. You know, well, I, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I would be satisfied with um, side if it had, if the side of the buildings had these, um, like the bottom with the one that's taller. If those, if you had them spaced every other one or something down the side of that building, would break it up some, um, both both sides of the building. It's just something to break it up, and that to me that's a nice, a fairly nice looking feature. Again, it looks like it's a different color brick, um, which would also be an element. Um, but also, I don't want to see a lot of different color bricks throughout this whole um, development. I don't want it to be too different, if that makes sense. Um, like a giraffe? I'm sorry, like what? I said like a giraffe. Right, right, right. You know, I don't want to see brown brick and green brick and white brick and, you know, that sort of thing, um, but to add to add the that feature that you've got on the on that bottom picture spaced down a great big wall would be something that would be breaking it up to me. Um, so that's my input on that particular wall. Okay. Well, we probably could talk about. <clears throat> does anybody else have any? Big, big items on the building elevations. Uh, I think there's quite a bit to. It'd be nice if we could get something to where we could at least take a look at it on May the fourth at the next staff developer meeting. Obviously, we'll keep this on the agenda. Mark, could we have that? Uh, those samples. Can you lug those down to <laughs> where we can look at the samples? um yeah i mean we, i think we yeah, get two mind weeks. you coming in my office you just have to watch about any animals that might still be alive in here anything but it's uh i don't mind you coming into the office it is a pretty heavy heavy uh set of bricks well could you could you move them out to the uh, room where you have the uh Papers. Yeah, calls. I could move them out to yeah. the uh, front, uh, somewhere out in the front for your area. Yeah, that'd be fine. That's just of so the, we don't of the codes you. office of the codes office. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Try to remember to do that after this meeting. I'll sit them out up at the building codes office out in the customer for your area. Yeah. That, that way you're not having to deal with us all day. Oh, yeah. It's all right. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. So the motion uh, on this was from Vice Mayor Pablo and seconded by St. Clair to approve the site plan with... Uh, Let's see. Even know if that's going to be relevant now. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, Do you want me to amend that to say uh, further discussion on? Building elevations? I don't know. What do you want me to do? 
Well, I mean, really what I think you're trying to the, act on is the, the civil plan sheets for the but, but overall project, you, which I'm is gonna just, to, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to uh, fast track this conversation if possible. Bud, are you looking for the ability to start your demolition and be eligible for a grading permit? Is that ultimately what you're trying to get tonight? It 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 was that, but also the Aldi elevations. I will I will say Aldi is really really anxious to get going, and uh, they they it, it it's going to break his heart when I tell him it's going to be another month. Uh, but you know it is what it is. But yes, I, I guess it. I'm, what I'm saying is it might be possible if we could get your site plan approved tonight and make it eligible for demolition and a grading permit. Um, and then get, get get the Aldi back to us. I, I just don't think there's the, the revisions to your elevations, I think, are substantial enough. It's going to warrant another meeting. It's just not as simple as, you know, saying, hey, push or pull or, you know, brick color or anything like that. I, I just think we need a little bit more work on it. But if you're trying to get rolling with this, I mean, I think we can help you do that. Um, obviously, there's other things that you have to do to, you know, be eligible for a grading permit, you know, like your, you know, all your roach control measures and your, your, your letter of credit and, you know, all the construction entrance, et cetera, et cetera. But I, but I, what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get you started and not hold you up is what, what I'm trying to offer here. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I appreciate Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, I appreciate that. Uh, I mean, in, in honesty, I think what Aldi was wanting was to get through this so that they could go ahead and submit their building plans so that their building plans could be approved. Look, our schedule right now doesn't have us actually starting demolition until 1st of July. So, you know, I, now I realize this is middle of April and, you know, in construction and development, 1st of July is like tomorrow. But the my point is, Aldi, Aldi was hoping that, that they would have everything ready, that if we were able to start uh, demolition and construction 1st of July, then they would be getting their building permits. And as soon as we had a pad ready, they could start their pad. And then that way they can be building their building while we're out doing all the rest of the infrastructure. So, you know, that may still be achievable, even if we have to come back with some revisions on the elevations uh, next month. Okay, I, I what what I was okay. I was just trying to keep you. If, if you were trying to yeah. strictly follow a schedule, I just didn't want to hold you up. Um, I, I'm not, Madam Chairman. I'm not sure that the best way to proceed with this action item tonight. I'll, I'll leave it up to to you guys to figure out what we should do with this. Yeah, that's a tricky one. Um, Mark, do you have suggestions for? A motion well i think uh you know the erosion control the slip sheets the grading and drainage plan sheets the utility sheets um, all could be to me uh, you know i guess approved with you know, with the letter of credit for erosion control, number 21, 22, 23, and 24, those need to be provided. Because so, some of these other things that we the really, the response we got on our, some of these comments is that they would work them out with the staff and the developer, but they haven't been worked out and they're here for you to take action on. So that's my concern. It puts all of us in an awkward spot. Um, I'm fine with the civil sheets and that's the sheets to me that would be your civil sheets. Um, and generally the site layout sheet is, you know, for the most part, uh, fine. I mean, some of these things we'll have to deal with, with the fire code and with the landscaping, um, uh, and, uh, you know, the parking analysis, if you all are okay with that, um, that's, you know, that's just something we pointed out. Some of these other things are just really minor comments dealing with the 
connecting the future public restroom to the adjacent with an adjacent pedestrian facility. That's no big deal. Removing the chain link fence that's shown in the development. Um, those are pretty minor items. So I think the bigger items Mark, that we need I, to work. Could I weigh yeah. in? Yeah. This is Don, Don Kendall again. Yep. I think you're hitting on all the right points. What our main goals are to get the civil portion of this started. Uh, and that, you know, the order of that is demolition, grading, installation of utilities, and then moving to, you know, get some paving down and get some curbs in and, and that sort of stuff. So I think if yeah. we could get approval to do that, that's, that would get us moving in the direction we need to be moving in. I think we're going to have a conversation with the Aldi folks first thing tomorrow and suggest that they go and have a meeting with you so that we can get the, <clears throat> the needed changes to the elevations implemented and then resubmit that and maybe revisit that as part of the discussion at the next planning commission meeting where we discuss the apartments uh, elevations as well. Well, and we still have to discuss some site related things too that haven't been worked out. Yes. So that are yes, some like of these subject to well yeah. lighting and the fire code requirements, uh, the landscaping requirements, you know, those kind of things and, we need. And to I envision we we have we continue having meetings on that and that we're probably making a visit to the next planning commission meeting and possibly the next one. Um, and and hopefully by that point we may have the first retail building that we can present to you as well. I, I think this is going to be an ongoing thing where we're going to have to continue to go to the planning commission to seek further detailed approvals of the of the project, but we would like to at least progress it so that we've got a clear path to closing and getting started. All right, so okay. I'm going to have to make an amended motion, Mark. Um, yeah, I guess. I don't know. You want what... me to just amend the motion move to approve the site plan regarding the civil sheets the you know, civil I mean, sheets only at this point yeah uh, that would be erosion and, control demolition grading and drainage and utility and tree tree preservation because that's related to grading would that be storm also yeah that's your drainage and uh, grading and drainage yeah and, and paving and parking and also yeah, paving and parking. The only thing is, we'll just have to work out, you know, those fire code yeah. items. Yeah. Yeah. So the civil sheets and 21, 22, and 23. And 24. And 24. 24 is a drainage fee. Yeah. 24. Okay. So uh, that's my amended motion. And I second the amended motion. <laughs> All right, I think I got it. That's uh, so the civil first. sheets, uh, tree preservation, demolition, erosion control, drainage, utility, and general site layout with the understanding that there's going to be some modifications uh, to that probably. So, okay. And then subject to the 21 through 24. I think I got it. Okay, Louise, let go ahead. Me, let me read, read the, unless the planning commissioners have any other comments, I'll read the roll call on that motion. Commissioner Green. Mr. Green, I. Commissioner Dick. Commissioner Dick, I. Chairman Holiday. Chairman Holiday, I. Commissioner Bellamy. Commissioner Bellamy, I. Mr. Myers. Mr. Myers, aye. Vice Mayor Poblin. Vice Mayor Poblin, aye. Mayor Williams. Mayor Williams, aye. Commissioner St. Clair. Commissioner St. Clair, aye. Commissioner Russ. Commissioner Russ, still here, aye. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I think that's messy, but I think it works. So. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, bud. Uh, thank you. Uh, Rita. Yes. Uh, what are your thoughts about postponing 10 and 11 until um, next month? I've got a, uh, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to complain, but I've got an early morning meeting, but it is. I, I second I'll that. Whatever the with 
I'm glad you said that, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I take that as a motion. I'm fine uh, with you too. So, um, yeah, uh, let's make a motion on that. Uh, well, so, who made the motion? motion? And I second no. it. Yep, I made, uh, I made it. Uh, I five and second. And number okay. 11 until next month. 10 and 11 till next month. Okay. Hopefully, next month won't be as long as this one. Uh, <laughs> From your lips All to right, God's I'll. Ears. I guess I'll read out the roll on that motion and second. Uh, Commissioner Green, aye. Commissioner Dick, Commissioner Dick, aye. Chairman Holiday, Chairman Holiday, aye. Commissioner Bellamy, aye. Commissioner Myers, Mr. Myers, aye. That's Mayor Poblin. That's Mayor Poblin, aye. Mayor Williams, Mayor Williams, aye. <laughs> Mr. St. Clair. I'll vote yeah. I, however, we're, we're going to miss our record uh, duration for a meeting, so. That's fine with me. <laughs> Commissioner Russ. That's we're fine not, with me. <laughs> past midnight. <laughs> all right. And Commissioner, Commissioner Russ, Russ. All right. Yes, Commissioner and Russ. So that sounds good. The so the be... April 15th, 2021 meeting of the Farragut Municipal Planning Commission is adjourned. Thank you. Sure, there was no citizen.